Good evening. Please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for October 29th. First thing we have is public comment. Is there anybody here in the public that would like to speak? Seeing none. Announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise. Yes, um, I have two uh, items. Uh, when we had the uh, Planning Review Committee meeting last week, uh, there was a nice map put up for the uh, sewer pipes that are going in at the transfer station and public works yard and everything. And I, uh, I have trouble visualizing the project. I like to actually see it. So I'm wondering if uh, we could probably post that map in the town office to show the public where the work is going on, I think it might help because uh, that's quite an impressive project. And uh, also, one a very nice gentleman from Unitil stopped by my home this afternoon, and he had a form to sign uh, to see if I would allow Unitil to trim the branches on a large maple tree in the front of my property that's near their power lines. And uh, I did uh, sign that right away, and I was very happy Unitil has been quite proactive in keeping trees trimmed and so forth, which helps tremendously when you have wind storms. So uh, I just want to compliment Unitil, and uh, he was a very nice gentleman, and I uh, thank you for taking care of overhanging trees. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, myself and you as chairman attended the US, USS Virginia a couple weeks ago. Uh, mm -hmm. We were at the Portsmouth <laughs> Navy Shipyard because we've been chosen again to be the host community because the committee did such a good job with the USS Hampton. And I know they're going to be doing some work starting, I think, this Thursday down at Kids Kingdom. Yep. And I was also asked, I saw Mike Edgar, and he was wondering if I could become the Board of Selectmen representative to the USS Virginia, if that would be okay by the board. I'd be happy to so move if you'd I accept get, that motion. I got no problem with that. So. We're going to try to recruit some new people so that they can maybe get on the uh, committee while the good. members who have done such a good job are good. still I'll on there. I'll second that. All those in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. Thanks. Jim? Okay. Uh, first Wednesday is Halloween, the 31st. Please drive safely. Please pay attention that there will be a lot of kids out there. Second, I believe the Chamber of Commerce is having a political event, oh. event yeah. on 7 o'clock. Uh, Friday morning at Wednesday the old morning. Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. <laughs> we'll got the rusty here to correct me. Wednesday morning at the Old Salt, and they'll have all the candidates, the local candidates there that are running for state rep and executive and state senator. Good thing to go to. And next Tuesday, next Tuesday? No, the sixth. Oh, yes. voting. Yes. Voting. Yes. That's yes. next yes. Tuesday. Sure. Early and often. Don't forget to vote, please. Yeah, and everybody yeah. vote. Be it be an informed yeah. voter also. Yeah, Thank you. Winnicott, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's at the polls. So we don't oh, yes. sure we talk yep. about that. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the only thing I had was uh, we had a, a little, uh, our first nor'easter this uh, yep. this past weekend. And uh, I know we had some damage around town, and Public Works was out there doing a, a number of places. <clears throat> I received a call from a, I received a call Sunday morning while it was still blowing from a gentleman down on Bradford Ave, wondering why the town hadn't been out to clean up the street yet, uh -huh. and with the sand down there, and and I tried to explain to him that one, the storm was still going on, and two, it was the weekend, and <laughs> and three, they were busy around town doing stuff that could have stuff that was doing it. But I did talk with the Public Works yeah. uh, Department today, and uh, they were going to go down and when they had a chance, take a look at it. So, Good. all right, consent agenda. We have a cemetery deed. We have a Hampton Beach Area Commission appointment of Nancy Stiles. We have a parade and public gathering license for 5-5-2019. We have a RSA 4114A modification of a deed restriction on 28th Street. We have a Unitil gas 
Align Petition at 50 North Shore Road, and we have a 2018-02 half marathon, uh, second half, sorry about that, no. second half, uh, 2008 <coughs> property tax warrant. I'll move the consent agenda, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Approval of the minutes, September 24th. I'll move, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll move the minutes of September 24, 2018 and October 15, 2018. Second that motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. There. First appointment we have is <coughs> Shirley Doheny, the town clerk. Good evening. Come to be friends. Is it more comfortable for you to sit there? Well, I'll, I'll sit there when we do budget. All right. um, I'm here before you tonight to, I would like to appoint a deputy town clerk that needs to be approved by the selectmen. And I've submitted that to you, so I don't know if you need to vote first. And then I would like to be able to swear her in. Is okay, that required? Mo motion. Or? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Tough. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's the date of her um, taking her position? It would be tonight. starting tonight. tonight. Yep. Okay. Um, I would just like to say that I've worked beside Cheryl for over um, two years now, and I have no doubt that she is the right candidate for this position for the town. And I'm happy to invite her up at this time so that she can take the oath of office. I can have you raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Cheryl A. Hildreth, I, Cheryl A. Hildreth do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will bear faith and true allegiance that I will bear faith True allegiance to the United States of America, to the United States of America, and the state of New Hampshire, and the state of New Hampshire, and will support the Constitution thereof, and will support the Constitution thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Cheryl A. Hildreth, I, Cheryl A. Hildreth, do solemnly and sincerely, do solemnly and sincerely, swear and affirm, swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. Discharge and perform all the duties encumbered on me. All the duties encumbered on me as deputy town clerk. As deputy town clerk. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeable. Agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution, of this constitution, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. 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 you. I hope so. We have a, vac a vacancy. Thank you. Thank you. So you do have a vacancy. So we do, put, have do we have a uh, do we have a job announcement yet or a posting for that yet? Not yet. Okay. Yep. But letting the people out there in the know that we do have a vacancy at the town at the mm -hmm. town clerk's office. So these so are our replacement pages, Christy. Yeah, Shirley has um, come up with the, her own with her budget, own budget now that she's the town clerk. So right. um, we went through to get that ready for you. So that will replace what is behind the town clerk. Excellent. Provider. Thank you very much. Okay. So I'd just like to start by saying. I'm new at this, so you may have to help me through it a little bit, but <laughs> I'll um, give you a little bit of my thought process in preparing this new budget, and then you can have some questions for me, then I'd be happy to try and answer them, and if I can't, I'll work on getting the answer for you. All right, thank you. Um, I went through the budget that had been submitted to you already by Jane, and um, it seemed appropriate to me to make some changes. Um, it, maybe the timing on some things might be different where I'm new in the position we're gonna have some new people in the in the office um, I thought some things might maybe should wait 
and some changes should be made. So that's what I went ahead and did. Um, would you like me to go through each thing? I, what would be the best format for you did, and my We did going it last time we went line by line, pretty much. Uh, do you want to go with the, uh, the overall page or do you want to go line by line? I'm asking the board. Uh, yeah, I think she. Well, why don't we just go through and take the the uh, the front page, the first page. All right. And we'll go through it. And we'll have ask if there's any questions on each line. All right. Okay. So, line uh, 41, 401, 1100, regular wages. Okay. Is there any questions oh. from the board? No, well, deputy town clerk at a starting step uh, in the Teamsters contract and the uh, bookkeeper. 13 weeks at five-year step and 39 weeks at starting step for the senior bookkeeper Teamsters also so that's a, a total of 85,631 any questions I don't have any problem uh, the next line 1200 mr. chairman I just have one wages. thing I'd like yep. to say sorry mm -hmm. first of all I appreciate you you know massaging this budget so that it fits your department because it's your department now mm -hmm. and I have no questions on this and I'm prepared to move the ele oh, election okay. registration and vital statistics if no one has any questions are we doing it that way or do, do you to move the whole oh <clears throat> you moving the whole budget the 41 oh I'm Ooh. sorry we only got part so only the first top part of it's changed. The voter registration and the election administration is the same as it was before. One, there is, a, uh, I believe, one change in um, the voter registration. You didn't get all the pages, Regina? Hmm? You should have got page three, four, and the cover sheet. Just All three of them are on the two pages. Top okay. part on it. Three oh, four. I only did the town clerk up here. Sorry, the detail has everything she wants. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Part. So let me just look through real quick. So the election administration uh, and supplies and expenses, town meeting expenses, moderators, right. wage, all that is. Yeah, I'm fine with this. Yeah. I don't have a problem <coughs> with that. So are there any questions for, on her? Her budget, Mary Louise. Yeah, wait one second because I want to get the bottom line before two twenty-three oh six. The town oh, clerk. Bottom line should no. be because you didn't get the second the election administration and voter registration. Her bottom line is two hundred and fifty-three thousand four hundred and forty-seven dollars. That's twenty-eight thousand one thirty-nine for election administration, five thousand and two dollars for voter registration. And then two hundred and twenty thousand three oh six for the town clerk. And what's what's that percentage? Do you know, Christia? It's up one point oh five percent for the whole department. Okay. okay. One point oh five. Did you move yes. that? Yeah. yeah, I'll move that whole budget. I'll second that. Yeah. Good. Sorry about that confusion. That was uh, my fault there. Nope. So we have a motion and a second. Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. I, if I may, I'd like to take a minute just to mention something. Um, there was some discussion, I believe, before Jane left, mm -hmm. and um, I would like to continue some discussion at some point in time that seems appropriate with the board. Um, I, again, have a vacancy in the office, which I mentioned, and I will be trying to fill it, and I anticipate there may be some problem in doing that based on the current um, rate of pay that is out there for that position. I understand it's a, a Teamster position, that it's a contract, mm -hmm. but I also believe there are some ways to adjust that if the board is willing to support me with that, um, whether it be to, well, I'm not sure exactly. That's where I'll be looking to you yeah. to help um, how we can do that. But um, I've trained a number of people in the position over the last few years it's expensive to train people yep. and lose them it's not beneficial to the um, residents of the town because every time we train someone there's quite a training uh, curve oh, yeah. for that department with the amount that they're required to learn um, which slows up the lines as we go through that process yep. and then we find that people they take 
they take the position, they know the rate that they're getting, but they have no way of anticipating right. the amount of responsibility yeah. and all that goes with the position. And they, we find that, I mean, there's different reasons people leave, but I, I believe part of the reason has been, a number of the times, is based on the fact that the wages is it's just not commensurate with, with the amount of work and the responsibilities that go with it. So I'm hoping that over the next few months, the board will be able to help me do something to correct that. So I would like to put that out there for, and you can let me know maybe what's the best way to try and accomplish that. A quick that. question, if right. I may. Which position are you referring to, Shirley? Is it under the part-time wages? Yes, it would be a, a part-time um, Because you've got the assistant clerk. clerk start step, assistant clerk five years. 21 year and hours. That. And those both come under the Teamsters contract? Yes, they do. Okay, and that are not the file clerk? We don't have to worry nope, about that's that? Not, that's not Just any, those not two. Any. So you've got the starting wage and then the assistant clerk at five year step is okay mm -hmm. well if if the adjustment would, would be ma were made it would include both positions include because both it's positions. the same position it's just that one person's at a different step than the other okay. one would be um, so the start rate would change which would change that would as well. we have to reopen negotiations with the teamsters i believe so but fred that's what the statute says. Either that or the parties have to agree to a uh, an interim contract amendment, which is difficult to do. They just voted the contract. Tom just voted the contract. So uh, the normal procedure would be to reopen the contract. Hmm. We chew it over for a little bit and... Yeah, we're going to have to. I mean, it's obviously, you know, and that's... That's kind of what I told Jane but before. Is it's, to it's not an easy subject to with counsel, or and uh, we're going to have to work through it. But I and I understand it's not easy, but I also believe something can be done. But I won't be able to do it without your help. Yep. So yeah, I totally agree. Okay, I'm making a note, and we will try to take a look at that. Okay. All right. All right. Anything All else? Good. We will look into it. All right. Very good. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you very Thank much. you, Shirley. Next one we have is Jen Hale, Deputy Director. I hope we have a surprise guest tonight. The director is going to say, oh. "Who's here?" Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you? Good. I had heard a rumor you got, might show up. Yeah, vacation. Let's see who canceled. gets the publicity. Little bird told me <laughs> vacation got canceled. So. Mm -hmm. She's going to take all this. Hmm. May I ask Chris about that map? Sure. You know the nice map that we had at the PRC meeting that shows where the construction is going to be? And I think it would help tremendously for the public to see that can, map. Can, can that map? <laughs> well, they had that great big map. Um, I can put that on the website. I'm just waiting yeah. for them to start. So or maybe that it stick it up in the town office or something. I'll put it on an easel. That's an important yeah, uh, we could do that. project, and I can't, when you just run off streets of we're going to have the pipes here and there, it doesn't mean anything to me. True. Seeing the picture it's a visual thing. was great. Right. No, I, I agree with you. It can be very helpful. So, there. Um, there are quite a few things on this agenda for us, so I was just going to go down the list, if that all works for you, and just go very one good. by one. So sure. we're not doing your budget tonight. We're doing. No, we, we are, do but we're, we're going to do it after these smaller. Okay. So I want to. I want to get to the right page. Okay. Um, the first thing we have on here is our recommendation for snow bid. Um, it is that time of year, yeah. whether we like to admit it or not. Uh, the bid went out, and this year we did a slightly different approach. We did ask bidders, even if they could not supply all the equipment we're looking for to let us know if there was uh, some equipment we could use. So for example, we did get another bid from uh, Coastal Paving. They have a plow truck and a dump truck that we would be able to use, and they'd be able to assist us with our routes. And a uh, sidewalk plow, you might be looking for somebody else. Or? Right, didn't, but we didn't get anybody who offered another sidewalk plow. Oh. But what we did get is another truck uh, with a plow and another dump truck. Oh. So it is all stuff that helps us uh, in, in all honesty, it's not just equipment, it's labor. 
Uh, we have people that have been out and sick and on illness, and you never know what goes down. We right. are shy, a highway foreman. Right. Uh, we'll be covering that position as well. So um, our recommendation that is before you today is that we accept the bids from both Jamco Excavators and Coastal Paving uh, for the amounts as they've supplied on their bid form uh, for the 2018-19 plow season. I did read the bids, and I, I will be happy to move that. I'll second that motion. And they follow all the, process, the bid process and everything? Yes, everything was done. We did send it out to uh, 10 different contractors. It was posted on the town's website, posted on the DPW page. Yeah. Okay, a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. There you go. Yeah, I'm just not going to realize how's that going. No problem. All right, the next one on here is the Master Electrical Services bid. Uh, again, this is a bid that we put out every two years. Um, this bid was put out again. Um, I, I'm sorry, I have to go back to the snow bid because I'm sitting here looking for papers and you asked me if it followed the whole bid policy. Mm -hmm. Because we did not get three right. bids, it does take that waiver to accept the two. So I apologize, so I Chair. A motion for the waiver. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Fair. All right. I apologize for nope, that. Nope, that's fine. Uh, which reminded me for the master electrician services, it's the same thing. This is a two-year bid. Uh, it went out to over 10 vendors. It got put on the website. Uh, it also uh, was put on our town page. Uh, we received two bids in. They were both competitive. We are going with the lowest bidder, which was Martineau Electric, and asking the board uh, to allow us to have the town manager uh, negotiate the contract with them for the two year, the 2019 and 2020 budgets uh, seasons. This is obviously dependent on budgets uh, in each of its respective season. This one will also need the waiver as we did not receive three bidders. So first I'll need the motion for the waiver. I'll, oh, I'll make I'll, that motion. I'll second. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. Next, we need a motion to accept the bid of Mar for Martineau. Martineau, yeah. I'll make that motion. Then. Second. Yep. All those in favor, unanimous. There. Uh, the third item on here, as we are very much getting excited uh, to <laughs> break ground on our uh, new proposed two force mains from the Church Street pump station to the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, deliveries of materials have begun. Uh, oh, we have good. some staging area at our site. Uh, we will be using the portion of the internal parking lot up by the skate park uh, for when we're working on this side of the bridge. This side of the bridge meaning uh, everything west of the Tide Mill Creek crossing. Uh, that will include, as Mary Lee has said, I'm going to throw out a whole bunch of words, but I'll put it up on uh, the website and also get a board made. But this is from the bridge, it comes across the Mason property through an easement we've secured to a gravity line on uh, Tide Mill Road and then straight through our facility up past the transfer station into the wastewater treatment plant. That is the first uh, phase of this project. Good. Uh, and gravity line, uh, which is pipe that we have available right now. <coughs> we are asking, however, that we close the Church Street pump station residential lot, not the lease lot, that goes uh, next to it if you're picturing the lot. It's the one behind mm -hmm. the uh, pump station. Part of it is still cordoned off from our temporary force main. This would allow the contractor to set up his, con uh, his construction trailer, uh, be able to do employee parking in that area. We have secured um, approvals from the diocese to use the lot across the street for the storage of materials. And where this is not summer season, uh, we believe that there's enough room in the leased lot to still allow residential stickers to park in there and the leased parking spaces that we already have um, signed leases for. Mm -hmm. um, I did put in my recommendation here just as a reminder that um, residential lots are not meant for long-term storage. Yeah. Uh, they're meant for residential use, whether it's going to the beach for the day or, uh, you know, needing, you know, an overnight because you know, someone came to visit. Uh, they're not <coughs> intended for four and five and six and seven day stays right. uh, while you go away. It's not the long-term parking airport scenario. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I say that because we're about to approach winter conditions and if vehicles are left there and they are in our way for snow <coughs> operations and we have noted that they are there multiple days in a row, uh, we do have the ability to tow them. Okay. These are not overnight lots. Good. So I just want to state that again that the, the lots that we have are not for long term lots. Right. They are not intended for They're long not term. intended for that. And if they are left there long term and they inhibit public works from doing their job, vehicles will be towed Good at man. the owner's expense. And we will do our best. We are going to put flyers on the cars down there tomorrow. Good. Uh, this will not go in effect till Friday. Yeah. Uh, so to give everybody notice between this meeting, yeah. uh, the flyers and people understand that there is an alternate spot to park right next door. Uh, we just ask that you're courteous and not using it for long term storage. And I just need so your need approval motion, to do that. A motion to approve the closing of the pump station lot. I'll make that motion. Second. Oh. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. I have a question about the project, though. Yes. Uh, on October 24th, the town manager sent out a letter to Victoria Sheehan, the commissioner of DOT. Because, yes. Fred, we were still looking for them to allow us some type of a... Um, Winter work. Yeah, the, to work permit right. their excavation permit uh, for the contractor Rivoli. This is what gives Rivoli the right to dig in the roadway. We have our use and occupancy. We have our wetland permits. This is the actual excavation permit. Okay. Uh, similar to ours and towns, they, they have conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, one of their conditions is that they're not excavating between November 15th and April 1st. Yeah. Uh, our original letter uh, in working with Fred was to ask for a waiver from this while we have favorable conditions and to not lose any time and to be able to just keep moving forward mm -hmm. as soon as we get that force main pipe, uh, asking them the permission to waive those requirements. Um, that letter Fred had sent out, uh, we spoke with both uh, NHDES and NHDOT since then. They've asked for some clarification, rightfully so. They wanted to see some schedules and timelines. Uh, we provided that information back to them Friday and I suspect we'll hear again from this week. Okay, great, thank you. And we're not digging in the roadway to be right now. This yeah, right now all the work that we're doing from the wastewater treatment plant to the bridge is basically within our right away. Yeah. It's once we get out to 101, even though a majority of it is not in the roadway, it's in their right of way, right of way which correct. requires their approval. Okay. So where are we? So we had a vote. So I think we're on to the next one. Yeah, right. Was, the next one. Did we? Oh. Route 27. Exeter Road. Exeter Road. Uh, this one is more <coughs> of a discussion, and then I'll leave it to you as to whether a motion needs to be made. Um, when the permitting through PRC and the planning board process for both Cornerstone and the hotel uh, came before the yeah. town, we did a lot of pre-coordination works sort of from future planning and yep. going all right these driveways need to align and we have the traffic from cornerstone and we have the traffic from the hotel and whatever's proposed back there and route 27 in that area is a limited access right away which means it's owned by the state we maintain it um, the bridges are theirs but we're talking that section of roadway that isn't a bridge over 95 and isn't a bridge over one uh, 101 a memorandum of un, uh, no MOA memorandum of agreement was established between uh, DOT, Cornerstone, and the hotel. Uh, we are n not part of it, but we were part of working with them to do it. That there were certain road improvements that had to be made. This was also a requirement of the planning board approvals. Those road improvements included the milling of all the pavement that you saw out there uh, from the interchange. Uh, past Cornerstone and the hotel to the other bridge and the repaving. The work was done. Uh, however, both DOT and our department have decided it's not quite done to the standard we would like it. Um, so nothing in an essence to hold up any CO or anything like that. It's done. They're going to be striping it as, it as is. But we have a letter of credit held uh, for the cost of all that work. And the uh, Opeachy Hotel, uh, Opeachy Construction, excuse me, who, who is managing the project for the hotel, are the ones responsible for that work. That was part of the memorandum of agreement. We have that letter of credit, and in working with the state, the state 
as well as us, have sent a letter that we want them to mill it off and redo it under one contract so that it all gets done at the same time, all done by a DOT qualified contractor, and then repainted in the spring, and everybody has agreed. Um, I'm here before the board telling you all this so you're aware of what's going on, but also because that letter of credit is held. It was approved by this board when the hotel project went up. It is for this work that we continue to hold that credit and be willing to call upon it if the work is not redone. Okay. Uh, question? Yep. Go ahead. That's right. Now, my recollection yes. is going back a couple of years. If I recall correctly, in that area, the, there was an illegal sewer line and an illegal water line that were too close together that were on the state's totally different area. Right totally different. Yeah. Different area. Dar different yep, different area. Dip Different area and different state right -of This is, Mary Louise, um, if you're going down Exeter, Exeter Road right. okay. and you're headed to Exeter, yes. you're going to have the restaurant on your right. Correct. Where they're burning corners. It's just that little area in between there that is bridge deck and pavement. That's oh, what okay. we're talking okay. about. Okay. You don't need but a vote on that or anything. Do I, did, I think I just needed your understanding Appreciate that that is that. what we're good. We're you're holding the letter of credit. That that's you're holding it. And that's yeah. And that I wouldn't recommend releasing it until okay. such time both DOT Jip. and ourselves have signed off on that. See, letter. that's why I like pictures. <laughs> and just to clarify to people, this is not at any town expense whatsoever, right? This has no expense to the town whatsoever. Right. Good. In fact, it's potentially saving us money and not accepting something that could be. A maintenance issue. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Next one. Drake Side Road drainage discussing. Um, mm. ah. Right now we have Drake Side Road. We've taken out the bridge abutment. Uh, roadway works fine. The drainage is working fine, with the small exception. And this happens once you come in with projects. We're getting a lot of runoff to one side of the road. Yeah. Uh, if you're headed towards Toll Farm Road from Route One, uh, there's a low area on the right hand side of the road. We really believe that over time the uh, water would infiltrate and that it would uh, not create so much of a big ponding situation, but uh, for safety reasons and uh, to work with the abutters, we really would like to go back in and put a catch basin on one side of the road, connect it with a pipe across Drake's side to the other. Um, we are unable to bore it which would be ideal, which means not cutting the pavement yeah. uh, because there's a gas line there. So we would have to do a test pit anyway, which meant we were digging it up. Yeah. But we can do a very straight one trench across from one side to the other. Um, I'm here asking because I need your permission to go into a road within five years, and this is within five years. So. Uh, but it is something that I think is going to help for future maintenance as well as winter conditions and these large storm conditions. So Drainage is critical. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll, I'll make so the motion that we go with the recommendation of the I have a director. motion. Second. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. And once uh, another recommendation to allow the town manager to look at the pricing that we receive, we will go through and get three quotes uh, for this work. It's not a bid situation. Um, and allow him to negotiate a contract uh, pending the funding that we have for it. As long as you don't make him dig anything up. That's f who, Fred? Fred? Yeah, we will not make Fred dig anything up. I huh? can't operate the back hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, move, would you repeat that so we have to authorize the town manager to uh, negotiate a contract between uh, three contractors once we receive quotes for the work? For this project. For this drainage project. I will so move. I will second. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right, this one I got to do because I forgot to hand it in. I'll, I'll ask the chair. Um, I have a contract amendment for Park Corporation. They are our construction engineers on the Mill Pond Dam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the money that they're asking for is $25,000. We've known it all along. It was in the Warren article of Crest. We just never were going to formally do it until they needed the money. Okay. We're down in the last few months of their observations, construction closeout and working with the butters um, and we now need this money so can we entertain a recommendation to allow the town manager to sign the amendment in the tune of $25,000 for park construction for Mill Pond Dam Mill, Mill Pond, Pond Dam, Dam. Okay. I will so move Gina makes that second yeah 
this not yeah. extra money this, this is not extra everything that we had calculated and thought would be in the project cost this is included in it we just weren't pulling the trigger to authorize it in case till we got done four months early and okay. we didn't need it yeah so we have a motion a second all those in favor yeah. unanimous and I, yeah. they almost finished there they are we're in about three weeks to backing out so uh, the concrete structure is poured. The whole left side is uh, backfilled with structural fill. The retaining wall is in. The right side, they have half of the retaining wall in. Uh, most of the structural fill, except for two feet, and they'll work their way back across and out. I have a quick question. We taking pictures still all along Hundreds the way? Hundreds of pictures. Bless you. Yes. <coughs> we have overestimated at least like 20 day or so okay, that's okay. Thank that is all I have all I right. shall sit back now graciously <laughs> that's enough right yes thank you very much next so item was on was on there is the budget and we've asked uh, um, Marie Hall uh, to come here with us uh, she's as you know the operations coordinator she uh, intimately knows the budget and helped us prepare it so that's why she's sitting with us tonight you just brought her along for moral support. That too, that too, <laughs> yes. Um, I know every year it differs slightly. Some years we hit the bottom line first. Some years we hit those only those items that went up. I am at the board's um, pleasure to do one way or the other. We've, or been, we've been going line by line. Okay. If anybody's had any questions. That works for me. So, I do want to say, and, and maybe um, Christy can put the slide up on the. Uh, oh, good. I went back through the. Um, I like slides. Go, go for the slide. Yeah, and particularly the pie slide. They were supposed I love to pie. The slides up for us. Oh, fun. Any guys from Channel um, 22 are good. I did. So, yeah, if you guys want. I can do the overview once the slides get up, the similar overview that I had done for police and fire, that sure. thing. And then it'll kind of lead into what Chris said. Okay. was Thank getting at there. Sounds yep. good. Huh. This uh oh. <coughs> <coughs> And this light is not red, it's not blinking. Does that mean something? Somebody said there was a plug underneath the desk. Yeah, no, it's right there. It's plugged in right there. Oh. Okay. Right there. Maybe not. Maybe not. Well, I'll tell you what the, his pie looks like. Does this need to be and on? His pie is showing. Because it's off. Try that. Oh, that's the other sport. Is that the other one? Oh, we had something. Uh oh. It's coming. Wow. Okay. Wow. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. <laughs> All right, so oh, here we go. Good. This gives you the breakdown. The public works budget in front of you is for $5,655,220, which is $448,509, or 8.6% greater than um, the 2018 yeah. default budget. Then it kind of breaks down, just like I did in the other ones, that wages makes up 45.67% of their budget. Yeah. Contracts make up 25.92% of their overall budget. Gasoline and gasoline and diesel is 2.23. Utilities is 6.77, and other items is 19.42 percent. Okay, good. and this just kind of shows that to you in the graph, the different um, pieces of their budget as a whole. And then this is the pie chart. Um, this is some. This is just like I had done for all the other ones. So it's basically showing you that the breakdown of the 8.61 percent increase for public works, and that's showing you the large piece of the pie there in the blue. Yeah. is contracts make up 6.18% of his 8.61% increase. Now, this just is not labor is, contracts. No, no, no. This is a contracts all. in the public works budget that have all been approved by the voters in 
one way or another as appropriations to be expended. It could be anywhere from trash, um, uniforms, uniforms, two new trucks. The lease of the lease of the trash trucks is the big one there. I think that's one hundred twenty-four thousand. One hundred twenty-four thousand. Yep. And then the rest of the pie showing you the other items actually that don't fall into one of the categories that we talked about, which could be considered items that are more of the yeah. leisurely type for the departments or whatever. He's actually at a <laughs> negative point uh, five two percent. So um, the other items there really Leisure. go to show that there's nothing in this budget other than things that have been previously approved. The contracts for that you were referring to, Rusty, for uh, wages would be under, the collective bargaining, I mean, would be under the wages. I, I got so that, but I just wanted to make three. sure that the public knew yes. <laughs> that when we said contracts, that that was not wages. Oh, yes, that it's not wages. That is stuff that we've already approved. Correct. And that we have signed contracts to finish. Right. Yes. So, so just to be more clear to the public, those contracts, oh, give an example one of those contracts. Well, the, uh, if I can start, that you know, that we've signed a contract. It was a warrant article for two new, uh, to lease two new dump trucks, mm -hmm. trash trucks. I shouldn't call them dump trucks. They, we no longer go to a yeah. dump. Refuse collection vehicles. Okay. The lease on those two vehicles is one hundred and twenty-four thousand. It's going to be in the budget for the next five years. This is the first time it actually appears in the budget, so it looks like it's an increase. Right. Um, <coughs> Landfill groundwater monitoring, because it's been mandated by the state that we yeah. test for PFOAs and PFOSs, is an increase of $17,000. I mean, where that was normally just a small $3,000 item. Waste tipping fees are, you know, we're into a third year of a five year contract with waste management. That's going up $55,000. Yeah. Um, just so people know, waste tipping fee, what does that mean? Uh, for every ton of trash that we deposit at waste management um, mm -hmm. they're charging us it started out at 62 it's now up to like 64 yeah it's the the finite numbers right here in the book but um, so all those contractual things we have the hauling goes yeah. seems by contract it goes up I think three percent per year um, that's that's going to go up 65,000 so I I went through the budget today and just on a piece of paper added up all those things um, of the 400,000 that it looks like we're up, 377,000 of those items are uh, contractual in nature um, to the point that, you know, you, you can't break the contracts. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the difference between last year's approved amount at 5,206 and this year's requested amount at 5,655 5, is a 448,000 dollar difference and 377 or 84 percent of it is all in the con in the contractual side mm -hmm. I w then went through and looked at all the other items that went up that um, um, make up that other 16 percent um, oh one of the things that Exeter sewer agreement went up it used to be a yeah. low seven thousand then it went to 23 it's now up to 30 something so in two years, it's tripled, quadrupled. It's that's up ten thousand this year alone. Um, but I look at uh, you know when uh, Christy said there there's some discretionary funds. Okay, street signs. We went from eight thousand to nine thousand. Mm -hmm. um, storm drainage maintenance went from it went up by nine thousand. Hired winter equipment went up forty five thousand. Uh, I think. You know, we, we haven't tried to hide the fact. I mean, we have two people out on long-term medical. Um, we have four, five new staff that don't even know how to drive a plow truck yet. So um, right now we're short two or three drivers on snow routes, and we're going to be redivvying up the snow routes. So we're re trying to rely on this hired winter equipment to make up the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so those are the, if you will, discretionary uh, items. Um, wastewater treatment plant electricity is up 2,000. The heat's up 17,000. Water's up eight. And uh, the grease that we're getting at the Church Street pump station, if more of the restaurants would proactively remove the grease rather than um, flush it down the, or flush their grease traps, basically clean them out with hot water and Borg's acid, um, I'm up 16,000 just in grease removal. 
in, in over a two or three year period of time. So um, it's not, I can make some cuts further, but there's not much mm -hmm. for me to cut, I guess is the, the, the overall message. Re regarding the grease, and I have that flagged in my paperwork here, uh, hopefully a code enforcement officer might come in handy, I'm hoping, for something like well, that. Well, we're also moving, we we've been working with Fred for the last year to rewrite the sewer ordinance, and it's got some updated mm -hmm. right. um, enforcement language and uh, in there. So as soon as we get that cleared by our engineers and back before the board, yeah. it'll give us uh, teeth that this spring when we go do our preliminary inspections, we can talk about more about the proper procedure. Yeah, because people should not be allowed to pour grease what? into the sewer system. Right. That makes a dreadful mess. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you for mentioning that, and that is one of my big concerns. Uh, as far as recycling, too, now, don't we have to pay for that when we're before we did it? Recycling is up slightly. Um, we, um, we never used to have to pay before. Right. Um, they did some audits. They've got us at we're about 10% contaminated, meaning that they want us to pay for 10% of all the recycling. Yeah. We've asked for another audit to be conducted this month. They've got it scheduled for December 7th. Um, hopefully that audit combined with the other past audits, which had us down below 5% and were allowed 5% mm -hmm. contamination, um, really um, I, I'm hoping we can curb that. But is some of that money in this budget? Yes, it is. Um, you know, last week the guys were telling me they dumped recycling and somebody had the whole mum in there, including the plastic plant, Wonderful. thinking maybe that we'd separate the mum from the plastic plant. We don't. Um, that's the kind of contamination that if it goes down to yeah. Waste Management Bill yeah. Rico, they'll count that against us and yeah. we'll pay long term. So those kind of things need to Chris stop. Could you just go ahead. You mentioned groundwater monitoring. Could you just explain to people what that is, I mean, and where it is that we're monitoring? Sure. We have um, about 10 monitoring sites around the landfill, some of them uh, in wells, and some of them are surface water sites. Mm -hmm. uh, the most one that people might see the most often is there's one over by the skateboard park. The rest of them tend to be behind the fence. Um, we haven't backed off uh, under Fred's and the board's direction for the last four or five years of, of not li limiting the uh, what we've been asked to test for. For instance, volatile organics. Uh, that uh, gasoline is a volatile organic. Yeah. Um, but also, what's happened as a result of I think the the Cobain th issue in Merrimack, uh, Coakley landfill, et cetera, et cetera. The state issued a statewide order. Uh, to all uh, secure landfills and some other uh, sites that we had to now start testing for PFOAs and POSs. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, the chemicals that we've been testing for, we're looking for concentrations in parts per thousands or parts per million. Mm -hmm. In this PFOAs, we're looking for parts per billion, um, which is very costly test to run. Um, so we do, I think it's three groundwater samples per year, mm -hmm. and we've, we're we complying with the state's order. As a matter of fact, they've sent recent communication. Um, last year's was a temporary. They're going to automatically kick it into the next year. Mm -hmm. So we've, we have to go to an outside lab for that. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. um, that's really driven up our, our – that's where instead of $3,000 of testing, we're now at like twenty one or twenty. Two thousand dollars worth of testing for the yeah. landfill, um, but it's in an effort to be, you know, responsible right. and prove that when we are not. It's the for the benefit of the people. It is. It is. Um, one, could I follow up on sure. that very briefly? Does it, in your testing, Chris, does it show the flows coming out of the landfill? You know, I've expressed concerns about Well Twenty Two, the newest mm -hmm. water uh, well and, and uh, trying to find out whether there's migration from the landfill over to uh, behind Woodland Road where the new Well 22 is located. So do any of your tests give you an idea of the migration or flow from the landfill? There's a, there is a groundwater map for the defined flow under the landfill, but it goes basically from Landing Road 
right under Brazonics that those condos right into the marsh. Uh huh. It does not go in any other direction. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So just a note on that. Yeah, I just we have your most recent one was done in October. Right. And they test for all the known components, and this is very important because yes. yeah, the number one every single landfill. Mm -hmm. is going to be leaking out the, yeah. these PFCs. But it is such an ubiquitous chemical spread throughout our environment that it's showing up in the wastewater that we receive and um, in the waste sludge that we deliver to waste management. Wow. The process doesn't reduce it, eliminate it, but it doesn't really concentrate it either. It's just, it's a, it's a very stable chemical within all aspects of what we deal with. Hmm. But I think it's definitely needed work to we Oh, definitely. I think more, you I know, think what is going on because they are everywhere, like you're saying, right. but at least if we are monitoring yeah. it and the state knows what's <coughs> going on. Right. And so is everybody. And I mean, we're trying, right. we're all trying to get a handle yeah. on what is a good limit, bad limit. Yeah. Uh, where is it coming from? Where is it going to? Well, in fact, when the landfill was closed, and I was on the board when the landfill was closed, um, a nice gentleman who used to work in one of the uh, gas stations uptown had told me that they would take their containers of oil or whatever they changed and the leftovers in the gas stations, all of them, not just one, and they would just uh, bang a cover on the top of it and bring it over to the, what was then the dump mm -hmm. and pour it in there. And I've always wondered what that stuff is doing under the landfill. Have those drums broken? Is the old messy stuff from the gas stations uh, running around underneath there? It's just a thought. Yep. I have, uh, under transfer station, are we on that? We're, we're doing the whole budget. Right? Sure, we're doing the whole budget. You know, okay, you uh, transfer yeah, station. Going, if you want, why don't we go right back to the start and, and yeah, I would like. All right, okay. Page one. You know, we'll go through administration one. first. Yep. Anything under the administration part of it? He's okay. answered my questions. Um, federal stormwater requirements. Are we eligible for any grants on that? No. No, of course not. Federal program and no grants. Okay. Right. So the grant or the break they gave us, and the reason why we went down from 40 to 20, is they took what they wanted us to do in the past over two years and have now spread it out over five. So they softened the landing on the, the new permit. Oh, okay. And the paving and reconstruction, you've got a zero? We don't use that line anymore. Don't use the we line use anymore. The uh, highway block grant. Finally. Okay. I'm on the next page. <coughs> Anybody else on this page? We'll go to the next one, cleaning and maintenance. No, I don't have anything there. The storm footage, I have, why are we zeroing out drainage the construction. drainage construction? Yeah. Storm drainage. It was in an effort to level out the budget. Uh, we are hoping to move forward with some more articles that would improve uh, drainage systems on Moulton and Lock Road, oh, and that okay. would be where we focus our energy for drainage construction. Okay. But isn't isn't our drainage in the same shape as some of our sewers are? It's always yes, it is. Yeah. And, yeah. and that we we really need to eventually start looking at that. You just talked about it a little while ago about the one on Drakeside Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's new construction. So, uh, although I I commend you for this and keeping your budget low, at some point we're going to have to start working at putting some money back in there right now we're just taking Fully the project down. taking the tack project by project and you know yeah. bringing the project com complete to the war to the voters is a form of a warrant so a question on that so this is going to be like a similar type project as to what you did down Anne's Lane you sort of exactly. tackled everything at one time okay All right. yep. thank you and sidewalks and curbs, you, you've zeroed that, same, again, the same thing? Same thing. I, uh, mm -hmm. When we get ready to go over Warren articles, we lump together Warren articles yeah. and ADA improvements, come up with a much more, okay. a higher, much higher number. Uh, I think my initial draft was $100,000. Uh, because at $25,000, we're not, right. we're not getting 
You're right. Anything done. A few panels and one of those ADA uh, placards mm -hmm. to have curb reset, pour the concrete, put in the ADA panel. You're talking almost like $2,500. Like you don't get, you need the larger project to make it efficient. So if you're going to do the sidewalks uh, for the schools on Winnicott and stuff, that separate article with the or separate project that the school's been talking about. It'll be a separate it's, warrant article. It would be, be a separate, separate warrant, warrant article. article. Yeah. Yep. Good. Going now, Lowell, you have salt and winter sand, and you, you've dropped those a little bit. You've had... Right. The the salt price actually dropped, so oh we re, we, we're we still using the same number of yards yeah. or tons that we buy, but because the price dropped, we just recalculated it, and it was wow. worked Good. out to a 15%. Um, we th also think we have some sa sand. We haven't bought sand even in our prior contract. I had ordered our former uh, foreman to do it, but uh, he's no longer with us. Uh, something I haven't picked up from um, his duties. But uh, yeah, it, it, there again, we were attempting. Um, the first time we went through this, there was a lot in here. And, yeah. and we were asked, you know, sharpen your pencil. And this is where we sharpened our pencil. <laughs> And then on the hired equipment, the winner? That's where we didn't sharpen the pencil because mm -hmm. of the staff being down. Um, right. Five new staff members uh, that have never really plowed snow. Um, we feel we're, if it's anything like the last winter, we're going to end up yeah. relying on these contractors. Yeah. Okay. It, you know, that's one of those things. If it doesn't snow, we're praying. Um, but we just don't spend it. Yeah. I mean, it's Good. I'll set on that page. Go yeah. to the next one. <coughs> Let's see. It's wastewater treatment plant. Career incentives. That was written into the new um, collective bargaining okay. agreement contract that the town approved last year. Okay. And that that's a positive, right? Because that means people are getting more. It right. Is. They're training. using our education line. They're they're working for under the uh, road. Scholar program. Road scholar program. And you, and you look at it, and it's a, you know it's a big percentage up, but it's only it's a big percentage up. Twenty one hundred dollar increase. You know, uh, mm -hmm. the staff is really excited about it. Um, it's a new energy. And we right. already talked about the grease disposal, which has got to stop being poured down the drains. Um, recycling, hauling. Fifty seven thousand. Now that's. Yeah. That's when you've got the se the actual se se segregated right. recycling. But the contract, we entered in a new contract with the board's authority in July 1. We went from 300 to 450 a haul. Yeah. Um, Are we going to get, Chris, a list of what is acceptable now in the recycling carts? Because there are some questions about so we're working on a whole new web page revamp and right. the issue that we work with is just like waste management. Right. It's a very fluid market for recycling. Right. So we're using their information as the basis for our information. Because so people need to know. And what I they encourage can. anybody to go to our website. We have the link to waste management's website. Yeah. They go in detail and give examples. You know, if I can say it once or a million times. Do not put the plastic bags in the recycling right. bin. They are not recyclable. It doesn't matter if you put recycling plastic bottles in a bag. You'll void out the fact that the bottles are recyclable. Um, okay. They're not meant to be put in a recycle bin. Hoses are not recyclable. But if you go to that waste management Christmas website, lights are not recyclable. Christmas but, lights are not recyclable. But a lot of people <laughs> don't have, or especially a lot of older people, don't have computers. Then can the we post something on Channel 22? Throw it away. We certainly <laughs> or, can. Because, yeah, yeah it was, uh, something readable um, on Channel 22, because I think people need some guidance. Because okay. I'm even standing there saying, you know, and what am I doing? Should I throw it away? It's been asked before, not? but is that something we can put in with a tax bill? No. That's what I thought. Yeah. So. But the, the public does need to know, the public at large it's does need to know what it. should go in. Yeah, but I think between now and then, if anyone's in doubt, they should just throw it away because it's not worth getting charged the contamination fee. Exactly. It's going to get taken to the landfill and get taken care of if it gets thrown away. I have a question under administration. Just the increases in engineering and lab analysis. Can you just 
for the wastewater treatment plant? Yeah. Um, the lab analysis is prim primarily due to the fact that we're still testing uh, Tide Mill Creek at the Route 101 bridge. Um, okay. The type of lab equipment, sampling equipment that they had to buy uh, that we normally bought doesn't allow us to test for that kind of water. Um, so that's why that's up dramatically. Um, it went up, as you can see, last year we asked for 14.5. We've already spent 15.2, and we still have two more months worth wow. of testing. Until the force main is completed next June, we're still going to have to comply with that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And um, same thing with respect to the engineering. Um, you know, for instance, uh, Fred very smartly said, you know, when you test for PFOAs, will you also test for uh, within the wastewater community and the sludge? And that's partly where that comp that engineering type, because then we asked the consultant, tell us what this data means, and they wrote up a summary, but it, it's not for free. Okay. Hmm. Anything else in this pitch? And the replacement uh, equipment, the collection bins and stuff has been zeroed out. We've got plenty. We don't need to order more carts or anything like no, that. No, that, that replacement equipment would be for parts, motors. But oh, okay. we figured with the uh, replacement, the, the maintenance bond that we have out there, uh, a lot of that's going to be taken care of in that bond situation. Oh, okay. Which page are we on this? We are on the wastewater treatment plant page. Okay. Last item is replacement equipment. Okay. Next is solid waste collection, 4321. Or sorry, the next line, 4323. Jim already brought up the groundwater monitoring, so I think I'm also with this page. Anything else into solid waste? Landfill operations, Jim brought that up. You will notice under solid waste uh, vehicle maintenance, uh, we went down 19% in, in the vehicle maintenance, and that's in anticipation that the two new mm -hmm. sidearm yeah. packers would le need less yeah. maintenance. So we tried. There again, that's the skinny Good. sharpening pencil. <laughs> Let's go to the next page. Are we on the transfer station? Or did we go? That, what, that's the page we're going to now. Okay. It uh, starts out with uh, landfill maintenance. And then the total uh, sub. So yeah, I had a question on, under the transfer station on the vehicle maintenance went from 8,000 to 17,000. They currently are actually using Jennifer's vehicle right now because theirs died. They seem, okay. we give them the old stuff, so that's why their budget is reflective of we give them the old stuff. But like, oh, for yeah. instance, right now, their pickup was deadlined okay. uh, because of, well, we're coming in the end of the year. I, I want to come in in the black, um, and they're, right now they're using Jennifer's car, uh, the silver bullet. So okay. that's one of the effects. And also in line with what's what we've been spending. Yeah, I mean right. that's. And then on the waste hauling, we already sort of brought this up. The tipping fees and the hauling; those are all contracted. They are um, contract items, yeah. correct? Okay. Thank you. Where and again, hired equipment looks up a lot, but you're only talking two thousand dollars, right? So, yeah. um, and that's really uh, we were here before you. That's when we're trying to clean up the yard again. This is under transfer station. Yeah. So if we have to rent screeners for materials or you know move piles around, those type of things. Absolutely. Now you had you had under there. You did have a, a line for screening and grinding. That was up hundred yep. twenty two. What and is those are contracts, so that's when the uh, company comes in versus us doing yeah. it ourselves. Okay. So not the ones we're hired equipment, if you think like, you know, the flatbed truck, if we need to move equipment, large excavators that are beyond what we have, we would rent them and yeah. use, we would use them. Um, the screening and grinding is the actual materials. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else on this page? Nope. I don't have anything. Seeing none. The last page we are at Exeter sewer agreement, which is up, and that you already explained that. Mm -hmm. um, 
What, what about the Rye Sewer Agreement? Because that's revenue coming in. Exeter Sewer Agreement is revenue going out. Where would we see the Rye Sewer Agreement? You'd see it on the re revenue, revenue side. The revenue you wouldn't page. see it on the okay. expense side. And, and okay. probably as these, you know, as the work for the wastewater treatment plant goes forward, that's when you would see um, Christie's office would have the ability to uh, add those bond bond amounts back okay. in. Good. Same thing on the fourth, the five million dollar fourth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have Go one ahead. quick question uh, on Anne's Lane, and I'm so happy to have that road open again. But when I drove over it and the lines are painted and everything is nice, but there are sewer manholes that straddle the yellow center line and the um, there's a bump there. It's like, it, yeah, th this is in a really, I, I didn't know any better way and maybe I'll get on channel 22 as well. This is not finished. This is not no, finished I realize anyway. that. So what you're having there is they had to raise those structures yes. to meet a temporary condition. Yeah. When they go do the final, you notice this time right. they paved and then they cut out. Right. It will not be like that when they do the right. final one. It's just they'll a, raise them and it then felt like them. more potholes to me when I drove down there today. It is not a pothole. It's a temporary condition. Okay, I'll I'll be nice and look at it that way, and I'll move <laughs> over to the right. <laughs> so is there Thank any other you. questions on public works budget? Um, I. Do if we if we're going to look at and I hope we're going to look at uh, vehicles because that's part of public works and I have some got it, <laughs> right the, at one point there was a pickup truck in this budget it has been as Jennifer just say ixnade from oh, the budget. I'm saying you know Appendix E has all the vehicles for police vehicles fire. we weren't prepared to discuss till we came to the warrant articles okay so because we have police fire and public works here and I have really gone over the public works um, and you thank you because you've been color coding and, and so forth but I think we really need to take a hard look at the vehicle inventory for public works so I don't know at what point in time you want to do we'll that be doing that when we do warrant articles because that's when they're going to be in the budget well, not all. I mean, we have existing vehicles that yep, need to and be that looked they've, at. they've talked about that with their with your uh, we're going to be proposing a replacement to follow our CIP on certain vehicles uh, yeah. through the warrant article process and I think that that would be a good time if you have questions about other ones that we're not replacing right. we can tell you the condition and right how their you know, I'm status a little concerned as to whether we are um, carrying vehicles going to come up later right that are just sitting there so we don't need to yeah these will be okay. coming up when when we bring up so we the can do the highway inventory during the warrant article Excellent. so that if if we need more if you need to put more in a warrant article you can well not that what i'm concerned about is having vehicles just sitting there and not being used but we can we can go I, through I that i don't think there's many time. of those but okay well the freight liner sat there since 2002. Uh, okay good so are we all set with public works budget? Yep. Thank you. All right. Do you want a motion to the bottom line? Or we, have, we, we haven't done, done any of them yet. We were going to come enough. back and do them at the end for the okay. bottom lines. All right. So. Good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, are they having you hitchhike since they nipped your vehicle? <laughs> <laughs> no, we share nicely. We oh. gave you the freight line. <laughs> yes, I've been using the freight line. <laughs> <laughs> No, we share very well, Mary. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Right. Learn to play. Okay. Thank you very much. Sort of like advanced ladies and gentlemen. Garden. Yes. Yeah. So the next one we have is you, right? Yeah, I was wondering if you guys wanted to do the individuals from like tax and conservation. We, we could do that. To stay for Let's the whole do that. Night. It's up to All you guys, right. but oh, yeah. we can do that. We can do. Uh, I have to stay anywhere. I thought maybe if you want to do tax conservation legal and then sure. circle back or however you want to do it. Sure. We'll start with uh, with the uh, tax collector. We'll go to legal. Well, well, you're on the front front page now. The uh, you on B legal. We are starting. Yes, we are starting with the tax collector, which was number two. Well, number and one says legal. I know, and we're going to start with number two. All right. And then we're going to go to legal after that. All right. That's good. So I have a whole presentation here that I worked on all day, and I'm going to throw a whole loophole into this. Um, last thing Shirley mentioned was 
that um, she was thinking of trying to get that Teamsters contract reopened for that one position to get the right. salary adjusted. Right. I'm hoping that you guys could keep me informed about that because when the deputy position went to a full-time position, and I know this really doesn't have to do with my budget, but this is that sparked this in my head. Um, and I think that was back in 2012 or 13, I can't remember the yeah. actual year. It never occurred to me to have her wage line in that Teamsters contract adjusted. So she's been working on a part-time uh, okay. wage um, okay. scale. They, she did try to bring it forward to the Teamsters when they were doing their contracts, but they were more looking forward for a entire contract rather than individual items inside the contract. <coughs> so I'm hoping that if we can get that reopened or looked at, that maybe her position could be looked at as well to have that scale adjusted. Good point. And if, if we can do that, I would be willing to um, cut the raise that I've asked for here in half yeah. so that it wouldn't hit the taxpayers all at one time to have both okay um, and I know it's a it, it's a maybe kind of thing but I would be uh, willing to go ahead and do that put that in in half tonight hmm. if that's a possibility okay but so if so putting that half in here so are you, are you saying that she falls in the contract she doesn't fall as a full-time employee, she falls as a part-time employee? The part-time, um, it was always a part-time position. When it went to a full-time position, the wage scale never adjusted. Uh, so it never changed. It's still basically what it always was as a part-time position. Do we have a, and maybe you could answer this, Fred, do we have a, um, is there a different, in that contract, is there a different scale for no, there isn't. It's all. Okay. It's what they negotiated. Okay. So again, it's going it's to be a tough, yeah. tough nut to crack, but yeah. um, I, I think you have the board here that wants to look at that. Okay. I just think that. I would, I would appreciate even just to look at it, you know, um, along with Shirley's position as well. We can, you know, if that, if we have to wait the three years, I would appreciate the board looking at it in three years, you know, when that contract yeah. is up. So that this maybe is. Maybe we could. So this is or is not a Teamster? It is a Teamster. It position. is a Teamster. Is. Okay. Yes. And Shirley is under the Teamsters as well. And Shirley's yes. people are under the Teamsters Her as people well. are. Yeah. Okay. Not, not not Shirley. Right. Not Shirley anymore, but right. Yeah. Right. But her yeah. positions are under oh, the Teamsters okay. contract. Right. Right. So All there are right. two departments now. That's a good thought. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so based on that, I have um, made a couple adjustments here in, in my budget. And um, so I have six line items in my budget. One item stayed the same. That was my staff development. There's no change in that. In that. Okay. Um, tax liens, we ha I have reduced that by a little bit based on what we've been using recently. That dropped by 200. Part-time wages, that's the wage that we would use if we needed to call somebody in if, if yep. the two of us happen to get sick or if one of us happened to get sick at tax time. Yep. Basically what that does, it gives me probably about two days of um, having somebody come in in case like say Vivian gets sick and it's tax day and, and I need some help. We yep. haven't used that in the past few years. Okay. So I have reduced that a little bit because I think that the two days would be enough to get by if, yeah. if if we needed it. Um, the other item that dropped would be my supplies and expenses that's based on usage. The um, reason that, the, that there is a now I think it's a 3% with the change in there is due to the wages. There was a contract for the Teamsters. My deputy fell under that. Um, she did get a $1,979 raise for, for 19. Um, and I am asking for a $1,730 raise. That's half of what I was originally asking for, which would bring my total budget to 106093 Okay, good. I think it's a 3% increase. So you're talking uh, line 1300 
Uh, yes. Yeah, I don't have she those is. numbers. I'm sorry. Thirteen forty-one five zero four thirteen hundred. Six yeah. six percent yeah. would be thirty-four sixty. So half of that seventeen. Right. Correct. Yeah. Excellent. Correct. Okay. So what would the Christy? Do you have a? I don't figure? have a calculator. So you're taking seventeen thirty from the yeah. elected official. Yes. One? Is that correct? That is correct. So then I have one oh one hundred five thousand eight hundred forty one. What did you say? No, oh, I have one oh six oh nine three. I go by you for for it. I didn't have a calculator. Well, I just took the sixty one thousand one twenty one and minus seventeen one thousand seven hundred thirty. It brought that salary line down to fifty nine thousand three hundred and ninety one. Correct. Yep. yep. And then that brings a total of one hundred five thousand eight hundred forty one. Okay. If you're not changing anything else. From Correct. What was in front Nothing of else is changing. One oh five eight forty one, Christy. Yes. Okay. And Good. so, bottom line for the percentage, what's that make per percent? Two point oh seven. Yeah. Percent. Thank you. Good. For the tax office. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Any? I guess no, no, I don't have any problem. All right. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank thank you. you. Thank you. And thanks for the consideration. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Good. Where are we now? We're at legal. Uh oh. <laughs> Mark is going to dazzle us with legal, legal discussions here. <laughs> okay. Okay. You're ready. Yep. Sure. Uh, as you know, the legal department going into uh, just completing its 16th year in house. Um, consists of two two portions of the budget. One is the uh, in-house portion or the top portion of the town attorney's office and the other is legal expenses which generally is outside expenditures. Yeah. And so the uh, increases you see in this budget in, in the town attorney's office consist of increases to wages that have already been granted by the board mm -hmm. uh, one percent to the town attorney that was granted in the spring and then a, a wage adjustment that was granted to uh, as a result of the wage study uh, that uh, for the part-time person uh, to come as the uh, description says halfway to the minimum step according to the MRI wage study yeah uh, there is a additional sum of uh, $3,750 in the part-time wages line, which is a proposal to have a um, intern, a paid intern for the next summer of 2019. Uh, we already had a, uh, that would be for a likely a uh, person who's completed the second year of law school. Uh, not this summer, but the summer before, we had a very positive experience with someone who had been completed the first year of law school and that was an unpaid position. Uh, that was a very uh, helpful um, addition to the office for that very busy, bus uh, generally a very busy time period. And so uh, this is a, uh, a uh, modest proposal at $25 per hour for someone in that, in that position. So that's the, 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 the increases that are proposed that are for the in-house. When it comes to the legal expenses, uh, the increases are in two lines. One is outside counsel fees, mm -hmm. and those are for cases that are handled by outside counsel yep. to pursue matters uh, at the board's approval and direction. And uh, at this point, I've given the board a uh, rundown of the uh, total litigation picture of, of the litigations, and there are approximately uh, three matters that are handled still by outside counsel and uh, it is uh, my sincere hope that the in that the amount of increase by the way this is the amount of increase over the default budget number a similar increase was sought last year but the in the operating budget but the uh, that was defeated uh, and so we have a default budget figure that's the 30,000 yeah. 
Uh, it's my sincere hope that that sum will be sufficient uh, for that. Um, in terms of the other, the other is uh, litigation expenses, uh, which uh, requests an increase over the default budget amount of 5000 to 10000 um, Some of that is involves uh, when we have an expert uh, in, let's say, uh, uh, environmental matters that we use uh, and have successfully uh, in dealing with some of the uh, aquarium matters and our uh, PFAS chemicals and uh, uh, dealing with the uh, large groundwater withdrawal matter. And so uh, that's there as a contingency for that as well. So those are the, the basically the items of increase uh, in this budget. Um, in the 16 years that we've operated, in 10 of those 16 years, less has been expended that has been budgeted in the remaining 60, six years in which there was more expended than budgeted, th that involved uh, matters basically outside of internal control, mm -hmm. uh, such as the outside council portions. Yeah. I did want to mention that there is an item of uh, revenue that the, that, uh, the department does generate uh, that has to do with billing for document reviews at the planning board's request. Uh, last year, the sum collected for that purpose was approximately $10,000. Uh, this year, we have more reviews than even last year. At, at current, uh, we've uh, billed for approximately $5,500 for revenue. Mm. Okay. Any questions? I don't have a problem with the budget. I know that in 2017, the budget was $304,030. So that's a significant decrease from the 2017 budget. Thank you for the explanation, Mark. I don't have any questions. Thank you, Mark. I hate this budget. I mean, I hate that there was such a litigious society <laughs> that we yeah, have yes. to spend so much money on legal stuff. And, and I mean, but I, I, I know that there's the necessity there, but we got to do a real good job of looking at what we're doing and, and same where we're going. Just absolutely. I hate it. I agree. Okay. Very Not good. you, Mark. Budget. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that very much. Thank you. We try. <coughs> Next one is street lighting. What What are we under here? That's not under Christy. Under Fred and I, do you want to do conservation first or not? Okay, we can oh, do conservation okay. then. Conservation. Yep. I'm just trying to find tags here. Let's serve our time here. Conservation. Yep. I got them. Are you just doing our budget or are we doing the whole thing? No, we got, you got uh, okay. the flood, flooding workshop. Warren articles and the budget. All right. Just give me a second as I. Good evening. from the Hampton Conservation Commission, but tonight we're here representing the Seabrook-Hamptons Estuary Alliance, uh -huh. uh, which is commonly referred to as SHEA. Um, SHEA is a nonprofit organization comprised mostly of members from the towns of Hampton, Seabrook, and Hampton Falls with the shared interest of protecting the Seabrook-Hamptons Estuary. The Seabrook-Hamptons Estuary is the second largest estuary in the state of New Hampshire and contains the largest salt marsh complex in the state of New Hampshire. Shea's mission is to protect the, the coastal and aquatic resources and preserve the Hampton Seabrook Estuarine system through education, community outreach, and research. 
and we appreciate the opportunity to spend a little bit of time with you this evening to share some of our recent and ongoing activities having to deal with coastal flooding in Hampton. Okay. Um, but before we get into the specifics of that, Rand's going to talk a little bit about the flooding itself. Okay. <clears throat> so what causes coastal flooding? Um, the term coastal flooding is not a new concept to Hampton. In fact, if you were to search the Lane Library historical photo catalog, you will find lots of impressive flooding images, some of which date back as far as 1919. However, it's not uncommon for people to think that coastal flooding only occurs during major, major storm events like hurricanes and nor'easters. But the image on this slide highlights the fact that there are several different ways flooding can occur, and it is when one or more of these types occurs at the same time that we see increased damage. The frequency and intensity of a flood event is also directly related to the property's topography and its proximity to the ocean or tidal marsh. So briefly, properties along the ocean front experience coastal flooding when there are large waves, high winds, and storm surge. While properties along our tidal marsh see flooding when there are heavy rains, strong winds, and elevated tides associated with storm surge. The damage on both sides is compounded when these events coincide with a high tide. Two of the biggest differences between the flooding along the marsh and the ocean is the marsh side is a lower elevation, which means they experience localized and roadway flooding when tides exceed, exceed 10 feet. Mm. And flood events can last for multiple tide cycles when strong winds prevent tidal waters from receding. The next big question after understanding the elements of what caused coastal flooding is how often is it going to happen? As you can see from the last slide, the frequency of coastal flooding is greatly influenced by tide height and weather conditions. This slide shows the NOAA predicted Hampton Harbor tides that are greater than 10 feet for 2017, 2018, and 2019. Keep in mind that these predictions do not account for the impact of storm events. Based on these tidal predictions, it equates to one 10-foot or higher tide event per week. Mm -hmm. This means that property owners in high flood risk areas will need to adjust their normal travel routines, find alternative parking arrangements, and in some cases deal with flood damage. If these numbers are beginning to make you think that high tide flooding is occurring more frequently, you are not alone. According to recent research by NOAA, the annual average number of days when water levels reach high tide flooding has increased by 75% along the Northeast Atlantic between 2000 and 2015. Wow. This study also found that in 2017, more than a quarter of the 98 tide gauges tide gauge locations that NOAA analyzed either tied or broke their individual records for the number of high tide flooding days. Unfortunately, the tide gauge in the Hampton Harbor did not have enough historical data to be included in this study, but the good news is the data from this gauge is now being incorporated into the National Weather Service's flood warning system. Hmm. Wow. The National <laughs> Weather Service now uses the tide gauge data from the Hampton Harbor to create what is known as a hydrograph. A hydrograph, as shown on this slide, uses the predicted tide heights, the hourly tide gauge data, and the upcoming forecasted amounts of precipitation to recalculate the expected tide heights for the upcoming 72 hours. The blue line on this graph shows the recorded tide heights for the past 72 hours, and the purple is the predicted tide heights for the next 72 hours. You will also see that there are three horizontal colors ranging from yellow to purple. The yellow represents a 10-foot actionable tide, and the purple is a major flooding with tides 13 feet or higher. The hydrograph that's shown in this um, slide is from the storm back in March, where there were several sequential tide cycles that ranged from 11 to 12 feet. Having this 
type of up-to-date title information is very important, <coughs> can play a very important role in helping to make sure property owners are aware of how the tides are reacting to weather and when the threat of flooding is increasing. We highly recommend that everyone bookmark, and you'll see at the bottom there's a link. Um, bookmark this link on their computers and on their phones. So to wrap up talking uh, just quickly about coastal flooding, I wanted to share some relevant information from our 2016 hazard mitigation plan. The graph that's shown here shows <coughs> the number of major coastal flooding events since 1968. As you can see, there has been a steady increase in the number of major events, which supports our perception that we are experiencing more frequent and intense coastal flooding. Another reason why flooding is such, has such a big impact on Hampton is that 31% of the structures in Hampton yeah. are located in the FEMA um, high, high hazard flood zone. And then 61% are located in the 100 year flood plain. Yeah. Now properties that are located in the FEMA flood hazard zone are subject to special building construction requirements which help to protect the structures from flooding and flood insurance is mandatory if you have a federally backed mortgage. Now property owners that are in the 100 year flood plain are often misled by the term 100 year flood because they think that it means there's a ch the chance of flooding can only happen once in 100 years. Um, but in fact, it actually means that there's a 1% chance that the flooding can happen in any given year. Mm -hmm. And if you apply that probability to a 30 year mortgage, there's actually a 26% chance in that 30 years of being flooded at least once. Ooh. Over the course of last winter, um, representatives from Shea and from the New Hampshire Coastal Program uh, have been speaking with Hampton residents um, about a variety of different flooding issues and, and what we collectively heard was a lot of frustration because people had a lot of questions about flooding, no idea of what the answers were or what the resources were that they could turn to to get those answers. So Shea teamed up with the Coastal Program to host a series of three workshops to try to provide some helpful information and resources that residents could use to decide how to deal with local flooding issues. The workshops were held monthly from June to August. Uh, we averaged about 50 participants at each of the workshops and we're grateful to see municipal staff and board members there as well, including Selectman Waddell and Selectman Griffin, uh, Town Planner Jason um, Bashand, and Nancy Stiles from the Hampton Beach Area Commission. The um, first workshop, um, covered a discussion of the protective values of sand dunes and salt marshes, an overview of what causes flooding, and DIY projects that can increase your property's flood resiliency. There were a couple of major take-homes from this workshop. Um, one that was sand dunes and salt marshes aren't just pretty to look at, but they really provide significant protection against storm surge and high tide flooding, and so it's in our best interest to protect and preserve those natural resources to the extent that we can. Secondly, that DIY projects such as elevating furnaces and water heaters, installing outlets higher up on uh, a wall can help make homes more flood resilient without incurring tremendous cost and without having to hire necessarily outside contractors. Mm -hmm. Workshop number, number two was focused mainly on two big flood insurance questions. Why is it important? and what does it cover? Um, and this was followed by a more in-depth presentation and conversation about the process of elevating a structure to meet or exceed the FEMA requirements. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the more interesting aspects of this workshop was a conversation that actually Rayanne had with a Hampton property owner who had experienced uh, flooding damage during last January's storm. Her experience starting with the emotional loss of her property to filing flood insurance claims and through the planning and permitting process of elevating her home was very relatable and educational to the property owners in the audience. And since then, we've probably had about five or six property owners come to the Hampton Conservation Commission 
looking for wetlands permits to elevate their structures. Uh -huh. So clearly some of the fear of this process yeah. and some of the unknown of this process has been taken away. Yeah. Workshop number three, <coughs> excuse me, was organized around three strategies for dealing with flooding. Uh, one was keeping water out, which includes maintaining and enhancing our natural protective features, such as those dunes and salt marshes, mm -hmm. utilizing floodproofing techniques, such as the installation of sewer backflow preventers, foundation sealants, and flood water shields on doors and windows. There was also a discussion about the pros and cons of barrier systems. They can work in some situations, but may be detrimental in other situations. Mm -hmm. So we really have to be careful about deciding universally that everybody gets a seawall because it's not always going to be to their benefit to have one. Living with water includes being prepared for flooding by including some or all of the following. Increased reaction time by listening to alerts, watching tide charts and gauges, having an emergency plan and a backup plan, carrying flood insurance, elevating the structure, including mechanicals above flood prone level, and improved drainage by reducing impervious cover. Getting out of the water's way includes parking and or staying on higher ground, reassessing how you use your property, understanding which areas are more susceptible to flooding, elevating or relocating your structure, or moving temporarily or permanently to less flood prone areas. The takeaway is that no one strategy works for every property, so knowing what you are comfortable with, what your tolerance for flooding is, mm -hmm. what you can afford, and what works best for your property is critical to developing a strategy that will work for you. At the end of the last workshop, we asked people what <laughs> thoughts and concerns they would like us to relate to you, the Board of Selectmen. And we're not looking for answers to these issues tonight. Um, but we think these are important issues for you to be aware of and for you to consider going forward in your discussions about various issues related to flooding in Hampton. People are interested in elevating their structures but are worried about their ability to get to and from their homes. Um, are they going to be trapped in their homes or are they going to be prevented from getting to their homes even though their homes may be elevated? Mm -hmm. So one of the questions for the Board of Selectmen is would the town consider raising roads that flood regularly? Um, mm. Again, we're not looking for answers, but it's a question that's been raised, and, and we think people deserve an answer, even if the answer is no, but they want to know what your position is. Uh, another question is, are town codes and ordinances keeping up with the increase in flooding activity, and if they are not, should they be? Mm. Hmm. Um, additional feedback. Uh, residents voice a common concern about the amount of relief granted from zoning ordinances in flood prone areas. Yeah. The concern comes from the potential impacts to their property that may be caused by relief granted to adjacent or nearby properties. Yeah. And the big question is, is there a way to determine if those concerns are well founded? Mm -hmm. And if so, what actions can or should be taken um, to alleviate those concerns? Sure. Drainage is also on the minds of many residents. Uh, we know there are two warrant articles, as Chris referred to earlier, uh, from DPW this year related to drainage issues and that work on those projects is moving forward. Um, and the hope is that the results from those drainage studies can provide or start to provide information about how to improve drainage in flood pr prone areas, not just in the neighborhoods that are the subject of those warrant articles, but in every area that in Hampton that is subject to flooding. Um, and residents also wondered if the town would take a position on any of these issues. Would the town consider constructing barriers such as flood walls, berms, tide gates, etc., in some situations that can help protect properties? Would the town consider limiting development in yeah. flood prone areas to provide for better water storage, flood water storage? Would the town consider providing tax rebates to help property owners recover from or deal with flooding, either on a proactive or in the recovery on a proactive basis or in the recovery process? Yeah. And would the town help to secure state and federal loans to help flooded property owners with the cost of recovery? Yeah. We know from some of you and, and from a lot of residents that we've spoken to that a lot of questions have been raised about FEMA's hazard mitigation grants. Mm -hmm. We know it's not an easy process. We know it's not a quick process. 
Um, but we wonder if perhaps the state mitigation officer, Whitney Welsh, should be invited to meet with you folks at some point to explain the process and discuss the assistance that her office might be able to provide. So now we wanted to move into kind of some next steps. Um, so one of the outcomes of the Flood Smart workshop that I'm really looking forward to um, is going to start in uh, early 2019. Uh, Shea will be hosting an ongoing series of Flood Smart roundtable meetings. Uh, and this is in an effort to continue the, the discussion on coastal flooding. Um, we will let property owners drive these discussions by suggesting topics they want to learn more about and questions they'd like to have answered. Uh, we'll bring in local or regional experts in the appropriate fields to help provide additional information and guidance. Uh, the meetings will be free of charge and will be open to anyone who is interested in the topic. Um, you'll see up on the screen there's the Shea website. Anyone that's interested in attending the roundtable discussion should visit the Shea website and sign up for the bi-monthly newsletter. Um, I know after some of those workshops we had an opportunity to interact with some of the um, attendees and you know I think there's there's people out there who could really benefit from having someone come in and explain how to read their flood insurance policy you know we learned from that conversation with um, the property owner that experienced flooding that there's a lot of details in those policies mm -hmm. that you might not realize and when you're actually in that flood insurance claim all of those yeah. details become very important so helping people to just better educate themselves on things that they can do to their home but even you know understanding their flood insurance policy and whatever other topics they're interested in I think is really going to be um, helpful one of the um, I wanted, we wanted to share with you some recent work uh, that's going on. Um, this is a resilient tidal crossing project that is um, being done by the New Hampshire DES Coastal Program, and it's involved assessing all of the 120 tidal crossings on the seacoast. Yeah. Now, a tidal crossing is a culvert or a bridge that allows um, mm -hmm. tidal waters to flow yeah. underneath. Um, this project was funded by NOAA and DES teamed up with uh, UNH uh, and the Nature Conservancy to analyze and manage the data. Uh, each tidal crossing was mapped, measured, and inspected, and they also took the distances and elevations from the culvert or from the crossing to the road or adjacent yeah. salt marsh and uh, stream bed. And what I think is particularly valuable about this information is that it's can be used by municipalities to help prioritize future culvert replacement projects and also the information in there could be used to support any um, grant applications mm -hmm. for those projects. Uh, when the study is finalized, the information about each title crossing will be available electronically, so it's something that could be downloaded into our um, GIS system. Um, and then next, um, we wanted to just share with you um, some of the um, proposed warrant articles that the Conservation Commission has for 2019. Uh, we often joke that as soon as the vote happens in March, we always have a new business item to start talking about warrant articles. It's something you can never seem to get an early enough start on, and yeah. so we're always brainstorming throughout the year, and we're always keeping a list of potential projects. So. Um, this year we have three potential warrant articles. Um, each of these have been presented to the planning board yeah. and as of right now two out of the three have been um, accepted by them to go to public hearing. Um, the first one um, that we propose has to do with the floodplain ordinance and as you may know a few years ago we um, revised our floodplain ordinance to include the concept of freeboard. Mm -hmm. Um, freeboard is kind of an additional margin of safety that's applied to the um, base flood elevation that's shown on the FEMA flood insurance rate maps. Um, base flood elevation is the minimum elevation that FEMA wants that first finished floor and all the, ele mm -hmm. all the mechanicals to be elevated to such that it's going to be less prone to flooding. Um, so right now uh, we have a mandatory one foot of freeboard and we allow that if in the elevation of the structure or construction of a new structure you're going to bump up against the height maximum, you're allowed to take that one foot, 
that's associated with the freeboard and add it to the maximum height. So what the commission was, um, as Jade noted, we've been seeing more applications this year for people that are interested in elevating their structure. So what we wanted to do was provide some flexibility. So what we're proposing is we're leaving it at one foot of mandatory freeboard, but we're providing the opportunity to go up to three feet. Yeah. And by providing that um, additional um, elevation, we are also suggesting that they could put up to three feet on yeah. that maximum height. Now they can't just add three feet, it has to be associated with elevating yeah. it to meet that yeah. base flood elevation. It's not just a reason to get right. your building three feet higher. Okay. Um, and so that one, um, the planning board was very supportive of and uh, you know we look forward to moving <coughs> forward with that one. Um, the second one is within our um, wetland conservation district section and also in the dimensional requirements table. Um, right now the regulation regulation says that if you are creating a new lot of record or uh, increasing the number of dwelling units, you have to have 75% of that minimum uh, lot area requirement outside of the wetland conservation district. Yeah. And our revision is we want to have 100% of it Good. outside of the wetland conservation Good. district. Um, so that one has also been um, accepted by the planning to planning board to move forward. Mm -hmm. The last one we are um, still working on, um, but conceptually, this would be another revision to the uh, wetland conservation district, and it would only apply to tidal wetlands. And that our wetland conservation district is that first feet, 50 feet from the edge of a tidal wetland. Mm. And what we are looking to do is for new construction or substantial improvements. Substantial improvement is um, a project that equals 50% uh, or more of the assessed building's value. Um, that in either of those situations, um, that uh, structure would have to be elevated on pilings yes. to allow the unobstructed flow of water underneath that building. And one of the reasons we felt that this was important is that first 50 feet, I mean, those structure, structures are right on the front line of flooding. They are the first ones to experience yeah. it. And it seems to make sense to do what we can to get those structures up out of the, the flood prone mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. um, lastly, I think um, Shay and the New Hampshire Coastal Program once again partnered um, together um, on a grant application from the Consensus Building Institute in part to continue the work we started in the summer flooding workshops. We were fortunate enough to be uh, awarded that grant, and the grant enables us to begin a long-term process of researching and guiding the development of co coastal adaptation strategies to cope with coastal flooding from high tide storm surges and sea level rise in Hampton. To start, we're performing a situation assessment to better understand flooding impacts, costs, concerns, and experiences in Hampton, as well as impacts and solutions from other communities around the country. One of the first steps we've taken was to create a survey to help get answers from Hampton residents and town officials about flooding issues, <coughs> and, and to date about 60 of those surveys have been completed and returned. Uh, we're also conducting interviews with select municipal officials and town residents mm -hmm. to further develop our knowledge and to create that situation mm -hmm. uh, assessment. The results of this assessment, assessment will help inform a future effort to convene a meeting of residents, property owners, town employees, board members, businesses, and other stakeholders in Hampton. Uh, and the purpose of this gathering is to evaluate a range of strategies to, quote, keep the water out, live with water, <laughs> or get out of the water's way at the property and town-wide levels. The ultimate goal of this process is to empower property owners and municipal officials to plan for community-wide adaptation. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't know the extent to which flooding ad adaptation strategies will be needed in Hampton in the near or distant future. But we feel it's critically important for the town to have discussed and adopted appropriate strategies so that we will all be better prepared to act swiftly and decisively if an unfortunate event or series of events comes our way. And our hope is that through the process of working through this grant, we'll help the town to get to that position. So that is what we've been up to. Um, I know we've come perhaps with more 
questions than answers uh, than you folks were looking for this evening. Um, but we think we've put on the table a variety of different issues that have come from a variety of different sources, most of which are your fellow residents in Hampton. And we'd we'll be happy to entertain any questions yeah. that you may have. I have, I have a quick question. Any, any focus on the river and the dredging or not in the harbor? Um, we haven't as of yet. We don't know exactly what the process of dredging is going to be. We don't know when it's going to take place. We don't know exactly how it's going to be dredged. No, but is it, I mean, is there any uh, discussion or thought on frequency of dredging, which hasn't been any too wonderful, or, uh, you know, the responsibility and the flooding, because the river can flood upstream. It's not just the ocean front that floods. The river floods too when you go in there. So I would think that somebody needs to be taking a look at the dredging and the frequency of dredging and why the hell you can't get the Coast Guard in here to do some dredging of the, of the river. That hasn't been addressed to date, but perhaps that is something that can be incorporated into the discussions. So something I would great. like to find out about, yes. But good job. It's, it's a lot of stuff that needs to be addressed. Gina? Yes, thank you for all that information. And to this, I mean, up till today, I had people asking me about, you know, how to apply for these grants. Yeah. So what is the best thing to say? We, um, well, help. <laughs> the town has to apply for the grants. Okay. Yeah. They can't. When you're talking about the, the FEMA hazard mitigation grants, so is this they have to come the through the town. They they can't apply for them individually. Yeah, so I, I'll just piggyback on that. I know, um, so the hazard mitigation grant program um, is only available when we have a declared uh, presidential disaster. Um, and I believe, and I can't remember which one, if it was January or March, but one of those did qualify, and it has to do with the amount of uh, damage uh, that uh, accrued during the storm. Um, we did have an opportunity, I participated in a meeting where several FEMA um, agents came in and even um, State Homeland and Security uh, came in to talk about the housing mitigation grant program and as Jay alluded to it's it's not a quick process uh, and uh. it's a little bit of a different situation I think for the town it's not commonplace um, as Jay said the town has to apply on behalf of the property owner yeah. mm -hmm. the funds come through the town yeah. there is a 25% match that is required on the um, uh -huh. property owners part FEMA pays 75% we have to, in essence, oversee a program that is occurring on private property. So wow. there's a lot of elements there that aren't <coughs> ones that we are traditionally involved in. And so when I've had people come and ask me about it, I've said you should reach out to the selectmen and share <laughs> your interest in it because I do think in order for it to be successful, we need to have a process. We have to have a criteria set up for what applications we are willing to, to support. Uh, we are going to need to allocate resources for someone to oversee these yeah. um, these grant proposals. So, so there, having I think that there's a meeting that you're talking about, getting everyone together would be really. I yeah. think it would be really helpful. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Because okay. I do think it's a great resource out there, and it's one if we can come up with that process, yeah. we should take advantage of. Yeah. But good I think work. we have a lot of questions that need to be answered. Very good first. work, on your Jim. Part. Yeah, thank you for coming. And thank you. Those workshops were great. I did attend the workshops. I know Griffin, uh, uh, Rep. Selectman Griffin was there also. Uh, mm -hmm. Mary Louise was there. They were very informative. And it was, it's, if you have more of them, people should go to it. People should pay attention to yeah. this because there's water all around yeah. us. <laughs> and it's not going away. You know, it's an interesting uh, historical fact that 4,000 years ago, the uh -huh. seacoast was at the Isles of Shoals. Yeah. That was the shoreline. Yeah. And 16,000 years ago, it was 22 miles inland. Yeah. So see, it moves around. It moves around. And, and there's no way you're going to you know, stop it from moving around. You can Most mitigate it. And we better be more proactive than reactive. Yeah. Yeah. Is, but you, you guys do a great job. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mother Nature. The Planning Commission, too, is somehow involved. The Rockingham Planning Commission, are they involved in this? Or? 
they well, definitely um, do a lot of settings. Like they did the tides to storms vulnerability right. assessment, which has some fantastic maps that looked at some of the different um, sea level rise scenarios and then combined them with storm surge. So yeah. um, I would encourage people to take a look at those maps because they show where this flooding can go. And, and uh, you know, as Jim said, we are surrounded by water and it's, it's coming in if you look at some of those projections. So thank you. They have great research. Okay. Now we can look at your budget. budget. <laughs> I want to go ahead and start with it, and it's really only what four lines. Okay. Um, it's. Uh, I'm sorry. It's pretty boring. <laughs> yeah. Um, the there is one increase that we're looking for in our budget this year versus last year. And that is to increase our minute taker um, uh, rates to from uh, it's eleven dollars. Oh, it's one ten per meeting up to one twenty per meeting. Um, and everything everything else is identical to what it was last year. So we're looking to take our budget from thirty five seven thirty one to thirty five eight fifty one. Yeah. Any questions on that budget? I don't have a problem with the budget. And I would just put a plug that we're looking for a minute taker. <laughs> if anyone's interested, please let us know. And so I just want to say one thing. I don't have any questions, but this the admin budget actually includes a uh, change to the conservation coordinator moving to the MRI wage study minimum stuff. Yeah. Similar to what we did through. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, so the budget's okay. actually 36943 Without a judgment. Thank you. I have no further questions. Yeah. I have none. All right. Thank you, Thank you very Thank you. much. Thanks, folks. <clears throat> okay. So now we have the rest of them? Yep. Okay. Christy, are we gonna have to go go in and come in the town office and sign the warrant or something? The tax warrant. We don't have to. Oh, sign the tax it. warrant. I think Fred has that in your guys' packet for tonight. Did you approve that on the consent agenda? I believe. Yeah, you already signed it. Oh, well, all right. I, I, I probably passed it around during. Oh. I think you usually oh. pass those around once they're yeah. approved. What I'm the like a little robot. If Fred gives us. Over there. Yeah. If Fred has us sign it. I don't read it. I just yeah. I think Fred yeah. has after you guys approved the consent agenda. I believe he started passing those documents around. Yep, right. so okay. It should be good. Yep. Good. The money is there. <laughs> All right. Let's start with street lighting. Sure. Street lighting is composed of two accounts. One is street lighting repairs, which are actually traffic light repairs. Uh, and as you know, we've been over the last several years, we've been trying to modernize our traffic lights mm -hmm. uh, and go to automatic um, signalization uh, with remote control devices instead of having to dig up the streets every five years to replace the coils in the streets which yeah. trip the uh, the individual light systems. So we continue to work on that. That's a long-term project uh, and it goes up every year. It's going up about seven and a half percent. That also includes changing the, uh, the lights themselves to yeah. uh, Good. more uh, uh, electric uh, conservative uh, bulbs uh, and then we have the electricity for the street lights, uh, which is $557,683 is the estimate for this coming year. Uh, that represents a 17.12% increase. Public Works uh, has uh, undertaken a project to uh, redesign all lights in town through the utility company, and we hope to have a report for you sometime in the spring of this year on changing all of those lights over. So we have LED lights instead of either a mercury vapor, high pressure sodium, or incandescent. Fred, could that result in a reduction in the? Uh, the indication to us is there'd be a substantial reduction in, in the, the total mill. appropriation. Yeah, that's why we're with a better at it lighting system. Yes, yes, absolutely. Excellent. That does street lighting, sir. Yep. Any questions? No, nope. I'm all set. All set. Okay. Hydrants. Um, we're expecting a large wicker charge, and it appears that that's going to go up twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars over what's budgeted here. 
we just don't know when that will be approved. Uh, it could be in January, it could be in February, it could be in March, don't know. If it's before the deliberative session and we can plat that, we will ask for an amendment on the floor of deliberative session so we can bring this budget more into line with, with what that's going to be. But the wicker charges do apply to this account. And as you can see, it went from 483 last year to 505. Uh, right. And we're currently carrying the 505 as the current figure. But that will increase for the wicker charge that's been filed. I thought they said the rates were going down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the rates on the uh, wicker charges go up. Oh. Uh, regular uh, regular water rates are going down, but the hydrant rates are going oh, up. Oh, okay. And the hydrants that they're going to shovel out um, and identify with the lollipops is I, that uh, what's going to happen? Uh, I don't. Uh, well, that's part of the the, uh, the the flags they put on the hydrants of the lollipops. As you describe them, as something that's a part of their uh, operational expense. Yeah. Because that shouldn't uh, come out Shoveling of the, fire the hydrants is something they don't do, yeah. don't want to do. Tough. Uh, and they're telling us that our fire department <laughs> has to continue to uh, send fire crews out with pieces of equipment mm -hmm. in order to shovel those hydrants out. And the fire department should not have those lollipops in its budget as it has had. They don't have them in their budget. For, in past years, I think they have. They were because they refused to put them up. Right. Now, now they're putting they them up. Not Any refuse. questions on the hydrant budget? Okay. No. no. Seeing none. Wish it was lower. We'll just is, that, growl. is that all the budgets now? That's the end on here. Oh, I just want to, I know it's not I'd on. Say, yeah, we didn't go through all of the budgets. I think the board was only taking up budgets where so there were changes other than like wages and Some stuff. Some of the budgets went down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. want to note one thing on one of the budgets that went down, if I may, on the building's budget. Yep. I just want to say that Kevin's budget went down to 218, almost 219,000 after admin adjustments, almost 2%, but as of, what do we got here? September 2008, he's already brought in almost his whole budget here of 208,000 for fees collected. 2008? I'm sorry, 2018, 208,000 um, in fees collected, which almost covers his whole entire yeah. budget. Good, for yeah. 50, over $57 million worth right. of value of construction. And that's only through September, so. That's just, yeah, he's still, got one, more. he's still yeah. got one more quarter left, so. Mm -hmm. We're not bashful, we'll out. take revenue. So, yes. at this point in time, do we have any of the questions on, we've pretty much been through the budget. Yeah, whole thing, yeah. Do we have any questions? Do we want to take no. any votes or motions or? No, it's just at some point I'd like to review the vehicles. Do we? Do we have to vote on it tonight? We don't have to. Can be to. passed on no. without us voting on it? I mean, Rick's not here. Can we, we vote on it after Christy fixes everything? Are I you, fixed the changes that, that, that I that? believe that you guys have already made. Oh, if you okay. do not vote on it, I don't know if it can go on to the budget committee. That's a question for Fred. Yeah. They, they can, cannot go on to the budget committee until the board has voted on the budget. Yeah, when Rick comes back. But when? But they, they well, need it by when, Christy? They would like their budgets by Friday. And th I didn't promise them. That was my um, best guess that I'd get the, them to them by Friday. But they should have. They're having. Them. Um, they were supposed to have a meeting on November sixth, which the they've already the postponed one. until the eighth because oh. they didn't know that they'd have enough time to review them. Okay. So yeah. their first meeting is they on do. November eighth, but the budget committee is under the impression that the budget books will be coming to them at, by the end of this week. Yeah. Because they do need to review them. Yeah, so. You want to just. Well, I'm I'll open to a motion. That we can we are. just, can I just want to confirm the only things that I am aware that have been changed. Um, tonight, you reduce the tax, cli tax collector salary by the 1,030. Yeah. 1,730. Yeah. Yeah. Then, um, when the library was here last week or whatever week they were here, their health insurance, right. a budget needed to be adjusted. adjusted. And then the health insurance for the town or everyone else outside of the library needed to be adjusted also. Okay. Um, so those are the only three adjustments that I have made to the budget from the okay. admin budget that was proposed okay. to you yeah. and the budget that will be the Board of Selectmen. So let me just scroll down here because then once you change a wage then there were um, some trickling effects into the retirement, um, Social Security and Medicare. So yeah. there were some adjustments in those lines under personnel administration so I have a total the budget actually is going up unfortunately because of the health insurance going up to 7.3 percent so the budget that the board of selectmen will be putting forward let me scroll down here there it is 
is that? Is $28,192,606, and that's 5.03% mm -hmm. greater than the 2018. So it's not a huge increase, but I just want to make sure you guys, yeah. I first I want to make sure that you're in agreement with those changes that I believe the board yeah. has made, yeah. and then second, if those are the changes that you guys made, then that would be what the budget yeah. would be that would be put forward to the budget committee yeah. so maybe we, we, we maybe we get a new cover sheet put, give it you'll get all new something. guts to your books and if you okay. want you us to put them in if you return your books we'll put them in otherwise I'll give you a pile of paper okay and you can play yeah, the we can 50 card shuffle or whatever <laughs> you choose do that. your kids do a great job they do I was gonna say I always bring my children <laughs> in and make them be slaves so please bring yeah, your books yeah, in yeah. the more books the more stuffing for them I just have one quick question could I just get the dollar amount of that increase do you have it? Um, I thought I wrote it somewhere. Oh. I think it's 61490 if I wrote that correctly there. Hold on. Over what the admin had brought forward. Right. Is that what okay. you're asking, right. Regina? Right. Or right. over the... Oh, yeah. Over last year's budget. Okay, though. over oh, last fall. year's budget, it's um, $1,350,294 over Perfect. the 2018 default amount. Right. Perfect. Thank you. Thank okay? You. Oh, good. So... so do That's I have the any other changes in the budget? No. Is there anything else that needs to be changed? You're going to move the budget as? I'll second it. $28,192,606. Six. A motion? Second? Any other questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. And Thank I you, I think Christy. I have financials on the um, agenda yeah. also or yes. not? Yes. No. Yep. Okay. yep. So would you like me to run through those real quick for you? Sure. Okay. So everyone should have received those, uh, I think, the middle of last week. Um, and they are on the website. Yeah. So let me just save this so I don't lose anything here in case I lose my battery. Okay. Let's see here. So it's a report for September. The target is 75%. Um, the month, the income from 2017 to 2018, the revenue is less by $193,390. This has been the trend all year though. Um, the big thing there is the highway subsidy that we got that an additional $267,000 in 2018. So our revenues will be under at the end of the year is my best guess. However, we've already adjusted them when we set the tax rate. And so the revenues that we use to set the tax rate should hopefully be right in line with what we do end up taking in for the year. The month's total income was $473,085. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $274,142. Interest on taxes was $13,932. Building permits at $14,791. Departmental income at $75,178. Parking lot income, start a little bit there, of $31,411 and the real estate trust at 45465 I think in October um, when we do those financials, that will be the last time that you'll see parking lot uh, revenue as the final show, and I believe they've turned in all of their banks. I think the parking lots are officially closed for the daily yeah. um, operations or for the concerts and stuff. They'll just be the winter leases now. On the expense side of things, you will find that we are 74.73% spent or under budget by $67,560 or 0.27%. In September of 2017, we were under budget by $537,620 or 2.18%. Um, legal is at 78.99%. Cemeteries are at 78.45%. Municipal insurance is at 77.56%. Parking administration is at 124.3%. Under the police department, you would, you'll see that support services is at 94.65%, and the police department as a whole is at 75.1%. The fire department as a whole is under budget at 71.77%. However, fire stations and buildings are over at 75.55%. Emergency management is at 118.25% and other safety services 
um, which is where the hydrants are, is at 104.62%. Public works as a whole is at 75.6%. Engineering is at 76.89%. Cleaning and maintenance is at 116.13%. Wastewater treatment administration is at 78.08%. Solid waste collection is at 76.5%. Landfill operations is at 275.13%. Transfer station is at 80.16%. And the sewer treatment is at 94.09%. Mosquito control is at 89.48%. Yeah. Under recreation, the maintenance of parks is at 94.98%. Library is at 77.2%. Patriotic purposes is at 86.2%. The, the other funds, uh, Fund 24, the recreation, has a balance of $193,755. Beach sticker donations uh, has the year to date is $18,426 and 13828 has been awarded in scholarships in that department. Fund 25 is a cable committee, has a balance of $290,935. Fund 26, private detail, has a balance of $191,000. $568. Fund 27, the EMS fund, has a balance of $409,170. And the wastewater system development charges, the fees collected in 2018, total $38,806, with a balance in that account of $222,292, and total fees collected to date of $418,233. And that was that, and I was fast. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions no. on the report? Thank you, Christy. Yeah. I'm good, Christy. Thank you very much yeah. for that. Thank you. We're Jim. close. We're close. We're we'll keep married. watching it. I did note that I went back and looked at other years when we had a default, and we're kind of right in line with a normal yeah. uh, place for a default. In 2014, we were at 148000 and in 2015, um, we were at, uh, oh, that's the wrong one. Hold on. At 2015, we were 74.69 percent, so we were even a little bit closer at that point. So, so, so you were right keeping a close eye, right? We will be keeping a close eye, yes. Very close. Yes. I will start to do um, internal, not financials, that will be posted because I'll do them in an informal way, but we will be doing them. Usually starting in November, we start to do them at least yeah. twice a month. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then in December, we almost do them weekly. Yeah. Super. Thank you, Chris. All right. So, thank, thank you very, you much. very much. You're welcome. <coughs> Next, we have Claire McGrail, 27 Moulton Road. at 27 Moulton Road yeah. in Hampton, and I've lived there since 1975. Um, the Grangers are my neighbors, and after their first trauma and what could have been a tragedy of their three-year-old son getting hit by a car, I requested a speed bump on Moulton Road. At that time, uh, Patrolman Savage uh, told me that we could have a speed bump. And then when the time came to get the speed bump, he said that there were no, fun there were no funds for the speed bump. Um, the second tragedy that the Grangers have suffered was the loss of their dog a few weeks ago who was killed by a truck passing by. Now, we are all really concerned about the speed at which people are driving on our road, and we request that something permanent be done and what we have in mind is again a speed bump because we think that that's the most effective way for people to slow down. We've had police presence on Sunday for two hours last week and there was a mannequin placed, um, I don't know, a couple of days yeah. maybe, uh, but th this is not a solution to this 
very serious problem. There are children going to school there. There are children crossing the street there, right in front of my house. Uh, the kids cross the street constantly to play with one another. And our neighborhood should be safe. And we don't want any more tragedies to happen. So we, we request something permanent. A stop sign, per perhaps, at, Molten, at uh, Morningside Drive. Um, some signage on the street. Uh, a crosswalk. Um, preferably a couple of things that would really slow people down. And as far as the promises of police presence, we have no faith in those promises whatsoever because we know the police are busy and we've seen that the police presence just is not there. In addition to that, the, um, the monitor was taken away. The speed monitor, for some reason, was taken away during the summer and oddly enough was put back two weeks ago. So we do have that but that really is not very effective. Mm -hmm. Kind of following up on that, um, you know, I had spoken. You want to use the microphone? Oh, sure. either, so because the public wants to hear you oh, too. Okay. Just um, pull up a little closer. Oh, thank you. Um, I had spoken and thank you for listening a few weeks ago and then um, I ended up going online and heard um, Chief Sawyer's um, responses to my concerns and that just was so discouraging and I just wanted to kind of address some of those. Um, the first one was that I had provided misinformation. I had simply shared my experiences and what our family had gone through um, and because we didn't press charges doesn't mean that speed was not a factor. Um, so I did want to bring that up and then um, the other point that he brought up is that speeding is a problem everywhere and so somehow that was everybody nodded when he said that yep it's a problem so that somehow seemed to make everyone feel and I think someone mentioned that we're hyper focused on Mike Moulton Road yes we are because our families live there our kids are crossing the street playing as um, Selectman Barnes or Selectwoman Barnes said um, we would like to feel that our kids can ride their bikes to the beach um, and play with one another without being slaughtered by an oncoming car going con consistently 50 to 60 miles down the road. Um, the other thing that's really different about Moulton Road is that we have a, one of the few cut throughs with a sidewalk so intended for kids to walk to school. Yeah with a double yellow line with no police presence um, something that was really concerning that he mentioned was and i will quote him um, someone selectman griffin said is anyone talking to the students about drag racing out of school and chief sawyer responded detective is a very busy man man in that area i have made stops as well we are talking about young teenage drivers they do not listen well at that age so that's exactly what he said. We live one street away from the high school. So I think that makes our location somewhat unique. Um, and um, the fact, again, we're most popular route to school for 16 to 8 year, 18 year olds who are admittedly, as he says, that who do not listen very well and who are speeding along with their, and it's not, it's not just them. Um, Someone responded at the end, um, I do not think there is more that you can do, more cars, more people. That, that was yeah. very frustrating to hear. There's a lot more that they could be doing. N right now we have, um, even when I drive down the road, I don't know where our speed limit signs are. I think there's one on each end and they're even hard to see. The whole middle of the road, even if you wanted to go to the speed limit, you wouldn't you wouldn't know what the speed limit was. So there um, are some simple things, um, the signage, but definitely crosswalks. Um, I don't know if anybody else has ideas. I think, I think also um, one of the things we were talking about is the police presence, and I know that they came on a Sunday morning or whatnot. It's, let's be honest, we have, we, like we said, we are the cut, cut road right. for the schools. And it's not just the high school, it's you know, to center school also, yep. Marston School the other way. So we're not talking about just the student drivers, we're also talking about the parents, everybody's rushing these days and they are going yep. way too fast. My concern is, or my hope is, that maybe police presence on a consistent basis, you have them at the crosswalks in front of Marston School, you have them at the crosswalks mm -hmm. in front of center school, 
I'm not understanding why we can't have police presence between 720 and 810, you know, on Moulton Road. And again, at 220 or 2 o'clock yeah. to 3 o'clock. Those are your major times when that road is used mm -hmm. consistently. Yeah. You're not, there's not a, there will not be 30 seconds when there isn't a road, you know, a car on that road. I honestly believe that it is an investment in our kids and in our community to have them there in, in that spot. You've got them at other spots, you know, with schools. This is just another spot mm -hmm. at the end at those those opportune times. And like Claire said, I think a speed bump, actually two speed bumps would be ideal for me, is, you know, a quarter up the way from Winnicunit and a quarter way down from High Street. Because what they start at the, at the hill on High Street and as fast as they can go, and if they're coming up, you know, it's as fast as they can get up there. Yeah. Um, I just don't want to see another tragedy. I don't want the fact that we've been sitting here and Claire's come before and Megan's come before. Um, I don't want another kid to be hurt on that road. And we are so fortunate that we have a road where kids are outside playing and they're not in their houses on their Xboxes or whatever <laughs> they do. We have a, a neighborhood where kids are out playing all the time. And it hurts to think that we're all sitting here just scared for the next thing to happen. Yeah. So we're asking for some serious help here. Um, my name is Michelle Daniels. I'm at 7 Molten Road. And I just want to add on um, what Leslie is saying there to just kind of emphasize the point that um, it's not just our kids who are playing on that road. There are kids who are walking. Um, from one edge of town up to Marston School. They're walking down to the high school because it's, it's a very much a pedestrian area, that section of town. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and so it's, it's not just the kids on the road. It's also not just teenagers who are speeding. It's parents who are trying to get the, the parents of Hampton Academy. I have a a kid, I have a high schooler and a kid at Hampton Academy. We're definitely caught in the rush. There's all kinds of craziness going on around that flashing light with parents um, passing on the right through an intersection. Mm -hmm. There's there's high schoolers who are walking that direction the entire time. It's just it's an accident waiting to happen where where there it, where people are coming in both directions, whether it's the high school, Marston, whether they're headed down to center school, or whether there is later in the day and the kids are crossing over to Tuck to get to the fields. Um, it's just a throughway for kids and pedestrians, but then it's also people just rushing by because our road is wide and there's a straightaway. They're coming across uh, Winnicunit and they, they bolt across Winnicunit to make it. And then once they've got their engines revved, they're rushing up the street and they've got this straightaway and it's wide open. It's so easy. I, I live on the road. It's easy for me to do it. Yeah. Um, so it's there needs to be some encroachment. There needs to be some obstacles to make people realize you. This is not the spot to to rush to get across town. There's there's too much going on with pedestrian traffic in that area. Uh, could you say a couple of words, uh, Jonathan Rufus, 57 Molten Road. Uh, two two young daughters, six and eight. Uh, one goes to center, one goes to uh, Marston. And uh, maybe paint another picture for you. I think we, we live in, uh, in an interesting time. There's been a lot of uh, creep out into to larger subdivisions, mm -hmm. sort of away from the center of town. Mm -hmm. uh, I think where we live on Malton Road, we're, we're very fortunate. Yeah. I think the infrastructure of Hampton is, is unique. You know, our, our kids can all walk to school. They, c they can walk to the library. They can walk to the mm -hmm. parks. So we're kind of in the hub. We're, we're in the nucleus uh, where we live on Moulton, and it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, my daughter's friends are getting dropped off in the morning to walk to school. So we're, you know, we, we've you know, thought about, well, where's the best place to live? And well, Moulton's a busy road, but yeah. the location is fantastic. It's one of the few areas where we can have that kind of old yeah. school yeah. life. And we really want to preserve that. And I think what's happened is there's a lot of kids. We have, uh, let's see, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think I can count at least eleven kids that are no further past the academy from center to academy. So that's that's a good population uh, on Moulton. 
and I understand, you know, trying to uh, enforce the speed with police presence may or may not be a reality for, for multiple reasons. It's, it's what we would like. Um, I also know from, uh, you know, there's going to be there's going to be two perspectives. If we can look at signage, if we can look at mm -hmm. crosswalks, if we can look at speed bumps, there's there's two pieces to that. There's there's budget, and then there's engineering and, and logistics, mm -hmm. and you know there, there, there's a balance there of well, what's the obstacle? Is it would it be budget or, or would it be logistics and engineering? Um, and, and so I think you know, we just want to get this out and and talk about it. I told, and my eight-year-old asked me, she said, well, you just tell them to put a sign up that says no speeding or else with the, with the crossbones and a skull. And she said, you, you tell them that, that your eight-year-old daughter from Marston <laughs> School said that. I said, well, if I get the opportunity, I'll, I'll tell them. So Molly lit that one up. Um, and so, in, and it, it doesn't have to be a big bang, you know. We just even even if there's you know a, a good follow up conversation to this, I think yeah. would be a good step. You know, we, we know it's not going to be fixed in a day, um, but we would love the opportunity to pursue something. Oh, okay. Like On the board. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, uh, we haven't addressed the uh, increase in traffic during the summer, which is yeah, really. Yes of concern yeah um, I think last meeting you mentioned that the GPS sends you through Molten Road yeah. um, <clears throat> I guess maybe to go to the beach or something like that a lot of those cars have Massachusetts plates oh, yeah. and we all know how Massachusetts drivers <laughs> drive it's really scary yeah, right. so um, that's another concern now some of them are gone thank God but uh, <laughs> they'll be back <laughs> Have, have you got, have have there ever been a speed bump on your road? No, no, no. never. And people tend to get kind of hysterical about speed bumps. And, and the problem with speed bumps is they're good in a lot of places, but in New England, you know, they're not good from now till April or May, which is April, yeah. which is when your school is the worst. Yeah. You have to take them out in the winter. <coughs> right, because they can't be there I when they're there plowing snow. there are certain speed bumps that um, we have another neighbor who's being shy, but he's done this research. Um, are there speed bumps that you don't They're called the speed tables. Tables, like, speed yeah. tables they can do. Mm -hmm. You're right, and that's something that can be looked at. Yeah. But speed bumps are really not what you want because right. the, no, just it would be out of the system so much. So yeah. speed, speed tables. tables. Speed okay. tables is what you're really looking okay. for. That's what we've been looking now, for. Fred, are we, are we looking at drainage on that street this year? Actually, we're looking to put a warrant out. We weren't, weren't article in to put new sewer and drainage on that street. And what I'd recommend is we make it a dead end street. Yes. Oh, oh, it dead end. Right in the middle. Oh, God, the morning God. side coming in, yeah, morning side can go <laughs> either up or down. Put a cul de sac in there for each end, and the problem goes away. You can you, you still walk. Going to make half the people on the street mad because they're going to have to go a different direction so to get out of their homes. Yeah. So uh, a speed bump won't work. I can tell you that right yeah. now. Yeah. We will be sued till the cows come home on that. We have to remove them. Uh, we had one over on. Um, more. I can't remember the name of the street more. at the moment. More. More. Uh, more. Yeah, so it was more. Uh, no, it's gone because we had to take it out last month because we're getting ready for winter. Right. Yeah. So. So a table then. I mean, you. Well, a speed the garbage, a speed table yeah. would work. But you'd need at least three of them on that street because of its length. Yeah. That's okay. You That's get okay. kids speeding. I get almost nipped th twice today going by the end yeah. of Bolt Road. Mm -hmm. Okay, on on uh, <clears throat> you know the main drag going out when it kind of and yeah. Uh, yeah. get missed just twice today, which yeah. is oh, yeah. not a record. Mm, no. I could put up uh, a sign with a cross and cross yeah. bones <laughs> and a skull on it, and I guarantee you by bones. morning it will be gone. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. It'll be uh, we put yeah, up speed limit signs all over town, yeah. and within a week, nobody sees them. Yeah. Because you yeah. see them once, yeah. you pay attention to yeah. it, and That's after right. that, it just disappears. Yeah. It's the same with the, uh, the, um, the, the lighted speed signs that, that, that have radar incorporated yeah. Yeah. in them, okay? Yeah. All that does is give us data on how fast people go when yeah. there's no cop there. Yeah. That's all it does. Absolutely. Uh, it'll tell you how fast you're going. Yeah. And uh, there's, we keep on moving them around town because everybody's complaining about the speed, and I think you probably know that. Yeah. Uh, there's one down on Landing Road, and yeah. I sat there a couple yeah. of times and watched it. Right. And, and people go through that thing at 55 miles an hour yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Other people go yeah. through at 20 miles an hour. 
it depends upon the person and how fast they, they're going and where they want to get to. The only way to slow traffic down on your road is to divide it into a cul-de-sac, double cul-de-sac road. I like we that. One, two, three, it. four, five, six <laughs> votes for yes. Okay, yes. now so. half the people in that road are going to be mad. Because they got to go that way instead of this way to go to work. Okay, it's it's well. You've got half and half sitting right here. Well, yeah, you I got understand. two of us on one side of Moulton and three of them on the other but side. But as long so. yeah. we're going to fix that road, even with speed tables in it, I'm going to tell you, you're not going to slow these kids down because they think it's a great thrill to go cru cru cruising over one of those speed tables and becoming airborne a little bit. Because that's all it's going to do. Okay, but what about police presence? I mean. You got to give me more cops. I'll yeah. be very frank with you. We, we're authorized 70 police officers for this town. We have 30. Well, so uh, what, whomever's working the shifts that are later for the center school, Merston school, I mean, wouldn't they be able to come on They're busy. earlier shift? They're busy at the schools because we're trying to keep people off the school property when the kids are out in the yard loading buses or getting to the cars or being picked up. They're watching that activity. But isn't that the resource officer that's there now? And every school has a resource officer. That's their job. So they, they're, they do, still and, that, and that's who it is. But that resource officer used to be out in the street doing patrols. Right, but you have ones on patrol. Correct? We have we have a limited number of cops on patrol for 300 lane miles of roadway. That's what's in this town. And when you have a majority on one road for a short amount of time, don't you think that's where they would be best suited? No, because your, your speeding problem is all day and all night. I watch these people daytime and nighttime going up and down that road. That's true. Yeah. And they yeah. come, what, they, what they're doing here is they're, they're avoiding the center of the town by coming past the high school Absolutely. and shooting right across that road. That light doesn't do a thing for them. If that was a stoplight, that would be a different story. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's not a stoplight. And yeah. the town probably is not going to invest $150,000 to put a stoplight there. Yeah. Because that's about what it costs to do it, do it properly. Yeah. They come through and make a shortcut out of that so they don't have to go through the center of town. They go right up, cross over, go up Mill Road, and they're gone, or wherever they're going to go. The same way with, with Lock Road. They do exactly the same thing there on a shorter scale. They don't go as fast. Your road's a straight shot. Yep. I watched someone shot. this I morning I know when I was on my way to the beach, and they came down your street, never stopped, went right straight across towards the high school, and missed the car by about mm -hmm. that much. Yeah, because just, they never stop. Even with all, you're right. That is what happens. I mean, the number of times I've had a nervous breakdown, people flying, and um, and you're not going to stop that unless I, you change the nature of the road. Yeah. So yeah. The, I like, but even this, I do think the speed tables will would help. But it just amazes me that literally nothing has been done. I mean, I'm talking that even coming up those. I, the, the death wish is Morningside up to Moulton, where those kids are coming up on bikes and, and then people who are turning, flying mm -hmm. down Morningside. Right. Yeah. I have no idea how someone hasn't gotten hit yeah. there yet. Yeah. Um, but there's no crosswalk, even, even with the number of kids who are walking, there's no, there's, Let me tell there's you. nothing. There's, there's, no, there's no sidewalks on Morningside. Right. If you put so a crosswalk that, you're gonna there. have to put sidewalks in too. We how, have people that watch them there. come downtown here there sometime is a stop and get up on there. High Street oh. on Morningside and Not watch them with the crosswalks. People don't yield to people in crosswalks. Right. They beat their horn at them yeah. and go yeah. flying yeah. through. Don't even yeah. see them. <laughs> Unless there's a cop standing right there, yeah. that crosswalk is useless if you have that kind of through traffic going on. What about a three-way stop at Morningside? Three-way stops are unlawful. What about a police officer mm -hmm. there? Two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. Fine. Writing I'll, a ticket at two hundred and fifty dollars per speeding ticket. Well, you can't write a two hundred and fifty dollars speeding ticket. Fine to start with. Okay. Okay. How much is a speeding ticket? In the it depends on what the judge will allow. And I don't know what the the, the, the fine the, is. The legal limit in this state for an unposted road is thirty-five miles an hour. The judge won't even entertain a ticket until at least doing four, five miles an hour over that. You get that all day long on Walton. I so let's say it. you write 10 tickets an hour yeah. times two, two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon at an average cost of $150 per speeding ticket. That's fine. In, including the, the price of insurance that they're going to, yeah. going to the speeding, the person that gets caught and gets convicted of the speeding ticket. So I put an officer up there and he writes 15, 20 tickets in day one and he spends the next four days in court defending them. 
Where's the officer going to be? He's going to be in court. He's not going to be up there running. You're, gener you're generating $150 per ticket. No, we're not generating time. anything. I, I, people misunderstand the concept here. First of all, we don't get a penny from the tickets. Nothing. Now that money comes back to the town. It all goes to the state. If, you, if you're speeding, okay, or you're doing a motor vehicle violation, yeah. unless you're a juvenile with liquor and you're driving under the influence, that money comes back. The rest of it doesn't. Every time we write a ticket and it's contested, that officer has to go to court and testify on it. Yeah. Sometimes he sits there an entire day before that ticket's brought up on, online. And what's the percentage that are contested of the tickets written? Do you know? Uh, for speeding tickets like that, high, high value tickets, usually going to get better than 50%. Because people, he's right, their insurance is going to go through the roof. Mm -hmm. The insurance company is just going to say, hey, you're a danger. If you don't have insurance when you get the ticket, the Department of Motor Vehicles is going to write you up and say you're going to lose your license unless you come in here and show us your insurance. Mm -hmm. So, right. these, these people that are speeding up and down our street are, 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 I know there's a lot of people that come through that are from Massachusetts, but these are consistently the same people. I see the same people every morning. They probably live right here in town. Yeah. They probably live right here in town. Yeah. Well, okay. they get two, three, four speeding tickets on Molden Road. Don't you think at some point they're going to say, I, I, I can't speed down that road anymore? Well, Jim, it's time for me to. But I have to station. He's going to have to station a cop there almost regularly. All right. right. So, Jim. Yeah. First of all, I agree with you 100%, and something has to be done. And, and just throwing back and forth will get us no place. I mean, it has to be a meeting with the police, with, the, with everybody to discuss this a, 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 a neighborhood right. meeting. The thing is also, I mean, we've got to realize Hampton is the most unfriendly pedestrian town that I've ever been in, bicycle or friendly. Now, I live down on the end of High, uh, High Street, and trying to cross that intersection to go to the beach is a disaster. Even with the lights, yeah. you feel like you're going to get killed. A police officer there is great, and I agree 100%, except first guy that goes through is going to hit ways, police on Molten Road. So everybody else is going to be warned. And that would slow them down for them while the police is there, but when the police isn't there, it won't. I mean, I think there are a lot of problems, and the problems have to be solved, and it, because it's terrible. It, you, you can't walk around this town. I mean, I'll agree. But it also includes that you've got to support the whole thing. Because you can't just come in and say Molten Road. I mean, we got to think about the whole town. It's a whole safe that. routes program. Yeah. yeah, and then when a warrant article comes up for the police, for more police, and then somebody says, "Well, it's going to raise my taxes. I'm not voting for that warrant article." You can't. Yeah, you got to. You got to think of the whole. You got to take the big picture. Yeah. You can't just take one road. And we got to deal with the whole picture. And we got to help everybody else in town that might have a speeding problem as yeah. much as you have a speeding problem. And I agree that your road's terrible. Because number one, the GPS sends you there, and number one, it's a great cut through. Yeah. All right, well, I don't take it. I go, the I go up. Park and the high school and the schools. Yeah. And everything but it's a lot of Hampton people. Besides, just like I agree 100 percent with you, rather than Massachusetts people yeah. speeding. When I come up High Street in the morning, I've always got somebody right on my tail. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going the speed limit 30, and somebody's just right yeah. there trying to get me to go faster. Yeah. So it, it's an issue that we got to deal with, but we really have to deal with it, and I think in a we, we, I think the police have to be involved because for, mm -hmm. just to sit here and us talk and say the police are wrong and da da da, not going to get any place. I mean, you know, the DPW has to be involved. Everybody has to be involved. I, I agree with that, Jim, but on the same token that you're asking us to support the entire, you know, picture, yeah. which we do because we are town yeah. residents. But you better start res responding to us yeah, too no, because you know what? We're all coming here. <laughs> And it's now the third time we've come. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. For safety reasons, with children involved in a town that I've lived in my entire life, and I support the town 110%, but for you to sit there and tell me that I have to support the police and everybody else before they'll do anything to help us, no. I didn't say that. I you did said, not say said, that. You said we had to, we have to do Excuse it. Excuse me. And, and when it comes Excuse up me. for warrant articles, make sure you vote for that. What I'm saying is let's support the whole town. If you misinterpreted what I said, what I'm saying is Let's support the whole thing, and we have to. If we're going to ask for more people, mm. we're going to have to get out there and, and, and advocate for that. We're going to have to advocate for getting things done. So I, I'm not I, saying I, that we would ignore you if you don't. I never said that. I'm I didn't say you were ignoring us. You. I'm just saying we are advocating for ourselves, and we are advocating for the entire town by doing this and making it a safer spot. So. 
being shot down for every single option, then we're asking you what option besides but tonight, it, you know, and that's great. If you want to do that with the cul-de-sac, that'd be awesome. We're going to reconstruct that road when we do the drainage and yeah. the sewer. Wasn't that's it on the Warren article, if I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken, probably six or seven years ago to have that repaved and it's never been done? It's never been done because we'd have to dig it all up again to replace the sewer. No. And was we didn't have the sewer the, money. Then why was it why was it passed? I guess I'm question I'm just questioning like Because it was an omnibus article with a whole bunch of other streets. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but when we investigated the sewer, we found the sewer's bad. It needs to be replaced. That's like Ann's Lane. The reason why we pat yeah. did Ann's Lane this year right. is because we did the sewer underneath it, we did the drainage underneath it, and we're paving it and now we're gonna put the, the final thing. coat on it. Yeah. What, what we're trying to what, what we're trying to do is do it right. We're trying to save your money in the long run by doing it so we can get the thing done once and have it done for 20 or 30 or 40 years. Yeah. But when they do that and they redo your street and your sidewalk, you think it's a speed lane now. Yeah. It's going to look like the Indy 500. You might as well oh, just absolutely. paint a start and finish line, line at each yes. end of the street. Yeah. It'll be just like Drake side. Right. When they did so, the Drake side. So my, my, my theory in, in dealing with these matters, because I've dealt with them for almost 60 years now, yeah. is science don't do a lot of good yeah. some people pay attention to them some people don't yeah, right. out of staters who own property here or rent property here in the summertime don't particularly care okay. they don't live here they're, they're, they're intruders or renters or yeah. guests or whatever yeah. the people who do own property here do consider the problems because they have to deal with them like you're doing right now okay you have to interrupt their flow of effort in order to make them realize they're doing wrong since we're going to reconstruct your street, it makes sense to me to make a cul-de-sac yep. up there, a double cul-de-sac, and make one side in, one side out, just for those folks. Yep. And or then you don't have a through street. Or you can make it a one-way road. Oh, you can make it a one-way, well, no. Uh -huh. No, they, they make them go even faster because now they get two ways to, to go. Yeah. You know, uh, it, there's, there's a number of different things we can do. Speed tables are good, but I watch kids with speed tables. If mm -hmm. they got a good car and it's sound and it's got good shocks and whatever okay you'll see them hit those thing at 50 and 60 miles an hour just so they can bounce over would it be behoove us to then go to the the police chief and ask him to come at least a couple of days at varying days of the week as a deterrent until we do something permanent you can ask we're going to put a, a warrant article in this this i hope we're going to put a warrant article in this year's solid sewer problem up there okay if he can put somebody up there at odd hours, okay, so that so that it covers the par the areas that you're talking about, yeah. okay, during the, the times you took, we don't want to put them on a regular schedule because they'll just yeah. avoid the schedule. Except, and I'll some, some I other agree time. with you, except you that avoid. we can't avoid the, the school hours. You can't avoid the 720 to 810. You can't avoid that because it's, they're going to school. Chaos. Well, That's why I'm saying that even, that, a, even that would be chaos. a huge deterrent for just if nothing else, the safety of the kids walking, and that to me is huge. I understand. I, I, I almost got nipped twice today at that intersection <laughs> on Winnicott kind of Road, okay? Yeah. That wasn't during school hours. Kids were in school. They go even faster when the kids are in school, is my point. They, I they, understand, they, they, but I'm, my concern right now is the safety of these kids on the road, and that's why I'm asking for those hours it's we're we, not even we asking can, a full we hour. can ask if he can do we it can i ask. don't know if he doesn't have the time or the manpower to do it but we will ask rusty first of all can't we ask that he has a meeting we, yeah yeah, yeah. With, i mean because he's done that with other neighborhoods can't yeah. we ask that the chief yep. have a meeting absolutely yeah. Yeah. and set up within a month or so, you know with it quickly yeah. because when we're talking about splitting the road in half we're not talking about doing it that's that could be something's going to happen next year right so what they're right. talking about right. is they're looking for some kind of solutions yeah. now yeah. some kind of short-term solution well, he's so here as deputy is supposed yeah. to be at the department head meeting tomorrow so we can ask him to call you yeah. ask him to get in touch with who wants to be the yeah. spokesman to get in touch with somebody and set up a some kind of a meeting set up with the, the meeting yeah, yeah. well Good. we have a name and phone number so yeah. that's yours yes, yes. okay yeah. we got a contact person I just have I just want to make a comment I know that this is happening throughout town. It happened. I live off Wanakana, down more the east way, and it happens. You know, you got the kids that come off twice a day, four times a day, actually walking from the bus. But your road is bad. Yeah. It's probably one of the worst areas in the whole town. So I think you know, if you meet with the chief, like we, Jim just suggested, that would be a really good start. And I also think that 
we need to keep talking about it, not with necessarily the Board of Selectmen, but everyone, because it is really getting dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I lost mm -hmm. my dog this summer, so I don't walk my I don't walk a dog right now. But I got to tell you, when I was walking my dog in my neighborhood, I would literally have to jump out of the street sometimes yeah. because yeah. they just and it's people that live there. Mm -hmm. 80% of the time. Mm -hmm. So we need to just make everyone aware that this is really becoming a big concern, and I think that might help it out a little bit, too. I mean, I, get, I, I had an accident at Winnicott Park Ave three years ago. Car pulling out of Park Ave, yeah. nothing oh, yeah. even stopped. All I saw was four eyeballs looking out of the two in the front and the two in the back seat <laughs> as I sent a punch to the car. <laughs> that happens. Yeah. And they blew the stop sign. They weren't doing it. They, so they do cut across there, oh, yeah. and it, it's understandable. But we have a lot of roads in this town, and a lot of places that are they're speeding. But we can a ask the deputy or the chief if they can do it. We can ask them. Yeah, to have you could do something right now tonight. Set up, set up, set the speed limit of 25. So, and we can post it accordingly. I think it's already 25. Is it? It's 25. Yeah, it's 25. 25. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I, I mean, it does questions. happen. They do speed on that road. We all know it. Yeah. I have two questions. Maybe, maybe we, we can ask our uh, school board members to talk to the students up there. Gladly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's involved in getting the speed, what did you call them? Tables. Speed tables. Speed tables. What's speed involved tables. in that? We have that, to reconstruct the road. Yeah, the road would have to be reconstructed. And, but that would happen while they were doing the sewer and, and, and okay. drainage. Okay, so, and so that's not a plausible point. possibility right, Short right term, now. Short-term, no. no. Okay. No. okay. So pavement, pavement companies, are the, the plants are closing down here in the next week or so. Uh -huh. So there would be no way to So happen. what about painting on, on the road speed limit 25? I mean, would that be possible or? It's not enforceable. It's not enforceable? If it's painted on the road, it's not enforceable. If it's on a mm -hmm. sign, it is enforceable. Right. So, so if you have the sign, but then you've painted it as almost a second to turn, would that work? <coughs> it's just not enforceable. I mean... But you've got the sign, so it's enforceable. That's correct. So we're just asking, would it... I don't have anybody to paint. I have to hire a contractor and get them to do it. It's we, too late. We, it's, it's one, it's late in the year for yeah. Yeah. for painting, and two, that's a private contract that we have that we don't. Yeah. We, we, don't, don't, we don't do that ourselves. We, we do contract that ourselves. I thought the DPW did the painting on the no. roads. No, they no. contract it. That's contract. I out. see. Okay, so what yeah. what can we expect to be done now? Just well, meet we with said, the police we chief? Will, we, will, we will talk to the police chief, and we will... We will ask him to get a hold of one of you to set up a meeting with your, your, yeah. your local neighborhood, which okay. he's done in the past for a number of number of things. Yeah. The, uh, the the sewer project just just kind of mapping out some some high level timelines. If it all went well, the warrant article got approved. What, what could you see? You know, construction. You know, begin construction end, and then the notion of. The two cul-de-sacs, what does that look like from a town perspective? We'd have to do the engineering to, before we could yeah. do that. Yeah. That would have um, to be. It's, it's not something that's just going to happen overnight. No, 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 no. I don't know if it's a year Actually, the sewer months, is, that's the easy part. Yeah. You know, we also want to do the drainage and fix the sidewalk and yeah. so on and so forth. But sure. um, that's probably a several month project. Yep. And that road will yep. be tied up for several months. You won't see a lot of traffic yeah. on it because yeah, people will just not be able to go down it, you know. I, I know it'll be a, a uncomfortable short term. Well, that's it fine. will be uncomfortable for, for yeah. the folks who live there, but it will be more comfortable because you won't have speeding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that'll be good. I mean, I suppose I could ask Public Works if they could put a couple of trucks up there every morning and just That'd sure. be nice. Lock it off. Oh my God, that would <laughs> That's work. a great idea. <laughs> I'm not sure it'll work. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, it beats putting out the babies in the middle of the road. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. Please don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Please don't do that. But the so, idea yeah. on timeline is something that that could be a spring or summer project of 2019. It would it probably would. be. It would be probably fall. No, actually, well, it depends. Yeah, it all depends summer on contracts. Fall. We'd right. have to do contracts, get that stuff out. It uh, wouldn't be spring. Yeah. It, it, it probably would be spring of twenty mid to, to late yeah, part of the year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. No, that's good. I have a good year and a half vision on it. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, All right. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Interesting problems. It is. It is, and it's it's a solvable problem. Yep. So. Town manager's report, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. 
the municipal the tax rate for 2018 has been approved by the State Department of Revenue Administration. The total rate is $17.02 per thousand dollars of valuation. The rate for the town is nine dollars and twenty-seven cents. No, six twenty-seven. Six twenty-seven. Wow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm reading ahead of myself here. Uh, the rate for the town is six dollars and twenty-seven cents, which is down five cents. The rate for the school is seven fifty-three, which is up sixty-eight cents. Yeah. The school rate, the state school rate, is two dollars and twenty cents, which is no change from 2017. The county rate is 102, which is up two cents, and the precinct rate is 83 cents, which is up 17 cents. The precinct precinct exact exempt rate is seven cents, which is down one cent. Those are for people who yeah. file for the exemptions, not to pay for the entertainment portion of the precinct budget. Right. The State Department of Transportation continues work on paving, striping, and cleaning up Route 101 in Hampton. Most of that work's been done at this point. They're just cleaning up now. You gotta be careful of the workers in the roadway, though. I, uh, they were out there working the other day and it was kind of foggy. Uh, they were hard to see. The State Department of Natu Natural and Cultural Resources will hold its park uh, community meeting on November 7, 2018 from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. at the Seashell Oceanfront Pavilion, the second floor in Hampton Beach. Public is cordially invited. Uh. The state election will be held on Tuesday, November 6, 2018 at Winnicott High School from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Absentee ballots are available upon application of the town clerk's office for those who are not available to vote on that day. Zoning petitions for the annual town meeting may be filed with the Board of Selectmen starting November 12, 2018 through, no, through December 12, 2018. Petition warrant articles may be filed with the Board of Selectmen's office until January 8, 2019. Um, the President of the United States has, uh, in fact, signed this bill, all 121 pages of it. Which and part of that allows for the dredging of Hampton Harbor and Seaboard Harbor. Oh my so, soul! What's uh, the time frame? Uh, well, I suspect it's going to be 2019 because by the time they get everything done, the bids out and the material done, it's going to it's going to take a while for it to get done. My but 2019. So and whispers, so, we're actually. But we were lucky. It. If it wasn't for our two United States yeah. senators. Yeah. It would not have even gotten in the legislation this year. It would have had to wait till 2020 or 2000. Isn't that awful? Yeah. So, well, thank them. It's you know it's we could work. thank them for all their hard work because they really did a lot of work to get that yeah. done. I would like to thank them. Can yes. we officially thank them as a board? Yeah. Could we send them a just yes. a letter? Yeah. While we're planning on doing that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Excellent. Last week you had a gentleman come in and complain about the. Uh, um, Joe Billy Brown Park yeah. and, and access to it. And, and uh, we went down to the examination. Uh, the material he's talking about actually is dune grass. Oh. It's grown quite lengthy down there. Oh. But I'm glad I did go down and look because there's a lot of uh, itinerant weeds that are not supposed to be there that are starting to crowd out the dune grass. Oh. So we had the recreation department who maintains that area go down and start removing some of those itinerant weeds and Excellent. farming them off to some other place to live. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, in our compost pile. So. Good. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Any questions? Yeah, on the quick one, Fred. What's the status of our meeting on November first? Uh, I think we're going to decide that in a few minutes. Oh, because council is here. Business, right? Ah, okay. and, and he business. has. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the next item is old business. And Anything, uh, Regina, for the town managers? I do. I have one thing under the agenda. It's listed as amend NHMA vote to include town council. Could I? I want to follow up on some things. I've actually contacted NHMA. And I don't think that we have to change anything that we've already agreed to as a board because their policy, I know Mark was concerned about if anyone asks any legal type questions to NHMA, but their policy as it exists now, I'm planning to talk to Judy Silva tomorrow, but I talked to her secretary today, will be that if any of the people that will be accessing NHMA, which are the two chairmans and vice chairmans of both the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee, were to ask or email a legal question that they would, out of courtesy, send make sure that both you and Fred were notified 
when the response oh. came back. So it's already a part of the NHMA process. Oh, good. So, so I just, we don't need that? I think it's we good. can just leave it as it stands. Okay. Any questions yeah. for the, on the town manager's report? No. no. Okay, so the next one is the amend the NHMA vote. No. My only question is, is Marcus, how come you didn't write that in the motion that you gave me when I made it a couple weeks ago? What? Because you didn't write the motion. There you go. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I, that was good. That was good. Well, there was there was some accusation yeah, yeah. by a member of the uh, another committee that, yeah. and uh, it was an untrue statement that he made. So. Yeah, that's good. Go ahead. Okay, where are we? Uh, so uh, there was a meeting scheduled with the Division of Parks and Recreation for this of the, of the state. Division, uh, Department of Natural and Cultural Resources, formerly DREAD. They keep changing their name. Yeah. We don't know who Formerly they are. known as DREAD. Yeah. Sneaky. And uh, this meeting was scheduled for this Thursday, November 1 at, um, at 7. Uh, as the board may recall, when the lawsuit against the uh, state of New Hampshire was non suited, uh, within a short time thereafter, requests for uh, right to know law materials went out to each of the three state departments that were involved yeah. on August 10th. Um, Department of Transportation, uh, Department of Natural and Cultural Resources, and uh, Department of Revenue Administration. State parks basically. In the yeah. The uh, Department of Natural and Cultural Resources did not respond substantively to this until uh, October 25th. We were informed by letter of October 15th that they would have records available for inspection by October 25th, which was last Thursday. Yeah. Um, my uh, staff person and I went up to there on Friday the 26th and got a look at the materials and there's a substantial amount of them and we just started to go through them uh, Friday and then again today and we'll again tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. Good. Um, my recommendation to the board is that these materials may be useful in uh, uh, going forward in terms of any discussions that may occur regarding any claims that were articulated in the lawsuit. So. Uh, it, it will take, because of the volume of the materials, mm -hmm. it will take a substantial yeah. amount of time more to uh, copy them and digest them and therefore be able to report to the board what is yeah. uh, in them. So I would uh, respectfully recommend that the board uh, vote to uh, postpone the current meeting schedule for Thursday, November 1 until a later date. Okay. I make a motion to postpone until a later date to be determined by the town council, town council when he gets some information about how long it's going to yeah. take him. I'll second, second that. Oh. All right. All those in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Are they giving you a little nap time going through all those boxes? <laughs> no. <laughs> Any other old they have I just been, have one more quick they thing. They have been I just very accommodating, actually. Because the bill was brought up for that Shaheed and Hassan I'm so, yeah, that Senator Shaheen and Hassan the dredging? Uh, added the dredging for Hampton Harbor into yeah. that. That's actually part of a 2018 water infrastructure bill, and it got approved last week. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because we just had one of our final meetings for the Seacoast Long-Term Goals and Objectives on quality drinking water. And I, after reading through the bill, there is a lot of it that I think is going to umbrella how all this contamination, source, supply, you know, oh. infrastructure, everything that currently exists with what we have going on. Huh. It looks like it's being yeah. addressed a lot of it by the federal government and a certain part of the bill. That's so I've outlined it. that. Um, I've let Mindy Mesmer know about it. She thinks it's very positive. We discussed it a little bit at the commission meeting today, but a lot of people have just seen it for the first time. So we're going to be wrapping up our report. We're going to meet on Monday for a quick meeting, and then after that, I'll have the actual report that I can present to the board on what's getting recommended. But I just wanted to, the commission doesn't seem like they're too keen on the fact we haven't voted yet. And having this commission 
be renewed. I guess it's gonna sunset in November and it was only for one year. So I was just asking, well, I'm gonna recommend it anyway as an individual, but I would like the whole board support that when we decide how it's gonna be addressed in the future that even though Representative Mesmer, Mesmer is not probably gonna be a, represent, a representative anymore, that she could, the board of the town of Hampton would recommend that she stay in process, involved in this process yeah. because she really has been key. Like that federal bill says things that she's been talking about the whole time. Yeah. So I would really like to make sure that she is continued through this process. Now her town could put her on, right? Yeah, well that, that is the way we could do well, it, yes. Except but, that the commission sunsets Right, we don't know what they're going to do, whether we're going to just you maybe do something with RPC or the Southeast Watershed Alliance or have another commission set up. But I just want to make sure that even if she's not an elected official mm -hmm. and, you know, Rye, she's not too, not quite sure what Rye's going to do, but I got to tell you, without her, none of this would have gotten done. So yeah. I think she needs to stay in the game. So I don't, we don't need a decision tonight, but like I said, I'll come back with the report okay. yeah. next week and maybe when the whole board's here, we can decide mm -hmm. good to do something. The time's like running that. short. You ought to uh, make a decision on whether or not you're going to ask one of your representatives to file a bill to extend the commission. Ah. Because legislation needs to be filed. You're going to do that. So probably you need to consider that for next week. Okay. You also got to make sure you've got somebody that's going that's to willing to do it. Yeah, I think we can. Re I think me and uh, Representative Mesmer can find a couple people that yeah. would be willing Good. to do that. Good. Yep. Okay. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Any other old business? No. New business? 1088 Ocean Boulevard approval of bond amount for $35,000. Yes, please. It's a requirement of the planning board for the construction to be done down there. It's, it's 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 something they have to do and we we do it normally for each one of their proposals that are brought forward from the planning board so i need a motion i make a motion to second approval of bond amount for thirty-five thousand. motion second all those in favor unanimous any other new business no. any closing comments motion to adjourn at 2206 second all those in favor unanimous Thank you, Channel 22. We're all going to be...